tweet image. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Boop, boop. Oh, oh, I don't have Hello. Roll20 open. Oh, oh Jesus, I'm not prepared to do it. Hello. Yeah, I, saw, I, saw, I saw your message, Tom, saying, where's my players? I'm like, I'm the only one here in Roll20. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whoops. Hey, Nick. Oh, hey, Bobs. Hey, Anna. Hey, Grace. <laughs> hey, Zathleen. How you all doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> What's the weather like? Uh, it's been cold. But not rainy today. It be yeah. weirdly war, so say of Jack. Weirdly, weirdly war. war. <laughs> it be weirdly war. <gasps> Have a mighty oh, fall. Oh, Zasly, no. Oh my god. Zero percent gobbo. I'm so sorry. Screenshot that. Pin that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should do that, that Jack. Needs to, that needs to be done. <laughs> Let me get it. I'll go get it. For people who aren't aware, Zaslene has currently done the how much gobbo thing and got two 100% gobbos. Mm. Oh. This is the first 0% gobbo I've ever seen. Has this happened before, Jenny? I don't know. Not that I remember. I think so. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my god. I that don't is... know. <laughs> hey, Malka. <laughs> what a turn of events. Honestly. Right? <laughs> Jesus. Okay, hi everybody. I hope you are completely devastated. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay. Oh, got a little bit of music playing in the background. I forgot about that. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't have that. Oh. You have the music playing? I, I, have I, it. I did when I first joined and it stopped about 10 minutes ago. Nothing currently. Oh. It says under now playing. Oh. oh. Okay. Let me stop and start. I'd have still been playing for me because I only just opened it. Entirely possible. Are you hearing some peaceful harp? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of cheeky peaceful it harp. Might be, it might be too oh. peaceful. Oh yeah, now I can hear it. Where's my button? Hooray! One button We're all together listening to some peaceful harp. Hi everyone. <laughs> I hope you guys had a lovely week. We're gonna get back into some D and D. Woo! Uh, and we will start with. Well, we said we were not going to do double uh, prompts anymore, but we've we've <laughs> we've found ourselves in a situation where we've done a double prompt, sort of. Uh, we found some, first off, we've got some really great prompts. I was just scrolling through some of the prompts that we were given last week. And in particular, we've got some great suggestions from Grace again, Malkavir, uh, Sarah, Docs. Very, very good. Oh, and Jess as well. Um, and we're going to do some more of those. But because some of them aren't super applicable to all of our players slash characters, we're going to do two. And then our characters can have a, uh, an option for which they want to do. So the problems that we're doing today are, uh, one of them, from, this one's from Malkavir. It says, you encounter a witch who says you have a unique aura they've never seen before. Describe it. So you are describing your aura. And the other one from Docs is, if your character were, into, were to invent something, what would it be? Mm -hmm. Good prompts. Excellent prompts. Good prompts. Okay. The best prompts. <laughs> Prompting. <laughs> We've got Jack sliding in with the prompts thing. Uh, Not even being prompted. <laughs> Not even being prompted to prompt. So if you do want to help us by uh, by giving us some more prompts, feel free to contribute it's tough it's more like a you sit here and you think about what's a really good prompt because it's not as easy as you think many prompts that we have are uh, we've been given are difficult to use because they may maybe don't apply to all of our characters we're trying to circumvent that by giving options here um but that's just the way it rolls the cookie crumbling it's, it's tough it's tough we've got some really rolls. good prompts uh, I'm very grateful for everyone who has contributed um, and we'll get to many of these in the future anyway whilst our characters or players think about those answers we'll briefly briefly recap what happened last session last session uh, Zaslin died because they got 0% gobbo <laughs> that was very sad um, but, but also uh, we basically had come out of the lair the mouth of gargoyles cave uh, that a spooky wizard had been living in, doing all sorts of spooky wizard stuff that our players didn't like. Um, and there was a mini funeral for a, uh, a another adventuring party as they'd found 
well, they'd found they'd woken up to one of their party members being uh, no longer with them. So they had a little funeral, and our party returned to the tavern. Basically, it's a bit of disarray going on in the, within our party at the moment. Up until very recently, Haiku had been reading a book called The Tome of Clear Thought, a very powerful magical item that once attuned to and read fully, all are you how many how many hours worth of reading is it you have to do? Uh 48 of six 48 days. hours of reading over six days. And if you don't do that within six days, your progress is reset, basically. Mm -hmm. If you do successfully read all that within a certain amount of time, you gain two intelligence points and your maximum intelligence is raised, which is very valuable. Unfortunately, it was a, it was a big old complicated puzzle book <laughs> with all sorts of crazy Sudokus in it uh, that <laughs> made Haiku very grumpy. So Haiku's been a bit grumpy the last couple of games that we've been playing. And that's had, you know, uh, impact on the role playing in that realm domain. Um, the terms are hilarious way to make your party volunteer for levels of exhaustion. Exactly. Because <laughs> uh, that's what happened as you guys got back to the tavern. Haiku spent the entire night reading the book. Very good. Uh, we also had Randall dump his head in a bunch of memory juice that made him start to hallucinate a little bit. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, Nurley's reaction to the same memory juice was to get amnesia for like three days. So yeah. there's been a lot going on. Everyone's kind of feeling a little bit, you know, exhausted, exasperated drained uh oro in particular has had to juggle the party members whilst they're all doing weird shit <laughs> uh we also had haiku suffer from a moment of insanity where they were extremely attached to their disposable turret uh, <laughs> that only lasts for an hour and then chugged a mystery flask that turned them in turned them into mist so oro's kind of just been dealing with everyone doing stupid weird shit and it's just been a little bit exasperated with the whole thing. So it didn't help that in our last session, someone else showed up claiming to be Oro. Oro, Jenny's character, is a kind of famous performing goblin, one of the few of her kind. Mm -hmm. And them coming up and pretending to be Oro, but with two R's, not one, <laughs> uh, sent her into a bit of a head spin. And we had a moment where Oro was real close to giving the old stabby stabby uh, on this fake Oro and their Kenku agent. Well, the cookie crumbled a different way and they ended up being handed over to the war wizard, who is the kind of the, the, the local police, as it were, <laughs> uh, called Rondel Diddragon, which is very different from Randall Dundragon. Uh, very, very different. Very different. Legally different. Legally <laughs> distinct. Yeah, legally distinct. distinct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yes, that was our that was our game last last week. We had our party return to the inn uh, for everyone to have a bit of a sleep. Um, Oro has promised the uh, the people who, who who were there that day that don't worry, tomorrow you will get to see the real Oro perform which will be, as everyone is assured, much, much better than the shit Oro who was juggling wooden knives. And the, <laughs> I had forgotten, the Kenku agent that was with them had... <laughs> this, is a, this is a very fun thing that we had. <laughs> uh, the Kenku agents, so Kenkus communicate via mimicking sounds that they've heard, and the Kenku was mimicking the sound of an audience that had seen Oro perform. So everyone's applauses that you could hear, all the cheering, all the music that was playing was actually coming from the mouth of a Kenku who was walking around playing the recording of a live performance of a, of a past performance that Oro had done. And oh my God. <laughs> Crazy. And it had, Crazy. did it have a voice? Really clever idea by a dungeon master, by the way. <laughs> it was a really clever idea by a dungeon master, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was what, Wasn't what, what, there the... voices of people from the circus as well in there that Ora recognized? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that also yeah. put a real sting in a, in a, mm -hmm. <laughs> hearing that as well. Put a bee in her bonnet. So, yeah. <laughs> so everyone's, everyone, everyone's been having a bit of a rough time recently. Um, in the downtime, everyone's go, having gone to bed now at the, at the end of the, their evening. 
um, Oro had written a letter, the real Oro, with only a one R, uh, had, had written a letter to, to Nurali, who is still suffering from some amnesia, uh, kind of just, I've forgotten what it, precisely what it said, but just kind of reassuring her. Uh, and where is it? <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, would you want to read it out, or Jenny, or shall I? Uh, you can read it out. Okay. Uh, it <laughs> says, hey, Neurally. <laughs> <laughs> it says, the letter said, hey, Neurally, but it was, the Neurally was scribbled out and Rue was there instead. Um, I just wanted to write you a little letter to say, I hope you're doing okay and had a good sleep. I know things are a bit weird right now, but we'll have a nice rest over the next couple of days, hopefully without any drama. I apologize for the whole bar scenario. It's been a rough couple of days and I've been fucked over, which is crossed out, messed about before in similar ways. And it really struck a nerve with me, you know? Anyway, I hope we're Gucci, crossed out, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Let me know if you need anything from Aura. I wish she slid underneath the door whilst, uh, whilst everyone was asleep. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start today's session waking up but first we'll do our prompts so dun, 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 dun. Prompts. we'll start with uh, can I go first so I can go get my food I was literally about to say let's do Katie just in case she needs to get her food I do uh, do you want to which question have you chosen I think Nerly would have a quite unique aura I believe that contrary to what anyone who is like familiar with the concept of this might think hers would be very uh dark primarily but it would be like a deep midnight blue and there would be little um like pinpricks of silvery light and little like strands of silvery light uh coming like from her and like emanating outwards it'd be very reminiscent of like starlight and stars in the night sky i was gonna say sounds very star night uh esque very cool. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, you can run and get your food now. Yep. Gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Haiku. Which question did you choose? Uh, I picked the inventing one. What? What? What did Haiku invent? Surprise. Haiku the artificer. <laughs> Haiku the artificer who has already invented multiple things during our his, their time in our campaign. Mm. Uh, we've already discussed the self writing mechanism. That'd be quite yeah. valuable. Uh -huh. uh, but I think ultimately Haiku would want to produce a, a mechanical replica of themselves. No, so they can be two plists at once. Whoa. Can as much stuff. Yeah, Robo Haiku. How do we know Haiku, that Haiku hasn't done that? <laughs> because they haven't. Oh. Uh, but but, but, but maybe, what if you're the robot? Have you got any dots under your eyelid? Oh, oh. Oh shit! That's a, <laughs> that a reference. What's what's it a reference is to? That, is that a uh, what's it called? I've, I've forgotten the name of the film is it now. Blade Runner? No, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he's oh. the he's the clone. Time something. No, it's got time in it. And he's like looking in. He's like can see himself in his life because he got I don't know. It was it starts off with like replacing pets. I can't oh, remember okay. the really film. Oh, oh, I'm starting to think of um, Battlestar Galactica as well. But regardless, you've brought references into a no reference zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm timing you Can't out. Can't catch me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you would, you would, Haiku would create a Robo Haiku. Yeah, yeah. So that fitly exactly the same. So they could be in two places at once. Yeah. All, all what? together at the same time. You know, they don't have to be separate. Well, for what purpose? Well, well there's no specific purpose. So we, who, who wouldn't want a second one of them? Be honest. I could get so much work done if I had two of me. Yes. Do I have to feed the other? <laughs> yeah. Do I have to feed the other me? I feel like having well, two the, of me around would be a pain, a pain in the ass, really. <laughs> they don't need to feed if they're mechanical. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they don't have right. to sleep. They don't have to. No. They don't have to go pee. It's genius. <laughs> Exactly. Someone play the not sexual in any way. <laughs> <laughs> if there were two of me, there'd be two of me not doing anything. Same. Just e coil. That's the one. Sorry. Oh. Don't, don't say the reference out loud, don't know. <laughs> Get yeah, a so mullet. It's, it's not. <laughs> okay. 
what would Randall's invent? I'm assuming Randall's chosen the invention question. Since uh, before we, we were discussing this, I you said that you had a sl- really great... I <laughs> may have overblown my answer. Well, you were really so hyped about it. You said past Docs excited. is a genius. No, play it down, play it down. <laughs> Wait, look, you can't prove anything. Um, so so Ra- Randall Wood has you know, he's got an invention idea. And from, from recent experience of having a, a book that... that folds its pages over as you can read uh-huh. uh, to read it mm-hmm. and then maybe it was like from being tired but he's just been thinking about it, it was like but why if it's turning its pages why can't it read itself to me as well and so randall's invention oh. is the audiobook oh my god it's just, <laughs> it's just a big slab <laughs> when, you, when you hold it it starts playing the like the over like a recording of someone who's read the book to you genius, genius. <laughs> I love that. I really love that. Is it? I like. I, I imagine that every single page, like I imagine that it has pages. It has like the self-turning page as well, hmm. but it also has like <laughs> just spells of message, or like a glyph with the way that message spell on it. So every time you open the page, the message spell goes off, and yeah. you just read the entire page. <laughs> Jack the Amazon Rindle. Rindle. Amazon <laughs> Rindle. Okay. <laughs> Write itself. <laughs> now that's the next okay. invention where the book writes itself. And then. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, very good. Very good. Oro. You choose the invention or the. No, I picked Aura Aura because I was mostly thinking of, you know, the Spotify wrapped Aura thing they did this year on the, like, what's your your Aura? What songs you listen to? Um, I think um, Aura's would be bold and strong, would be her two. Ah. her two words that would go with that and i think mm-hmm. it would be uh like fire colors like very strong reds and oranges and mm. bright yellows would be aura's right. aura which is sort of difficult like, to say out loud i really like that you made that into a spotify wrapped reference that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the media one i thought of <laughs> you set the prompt before spotify wrapped oh those assholes <laughs> <They know. laughs> Jesus. oh my goodness okay uh, those are great. Thank you much. Thank you much. Thank, Thank you, you much. very much, everybody. Welcome much for for contributing to the prompts as usual. Um, we've got some we've got some really good prompts queued up. Um, but if you do feel like if you're up to the task of putting some prompts together into our form, feel free. It's a really good way for us to get to know our characters a little bit better, but also to get ourselves in the zone and for for you guys to to find out things about our characters if you've got you know cool ideas for prompts. Any whom, uh, I think Katie is still in her. F- Never mind. Perfect timing. Wow. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, Hi. So, what we had? We had we had a really good uh, aura from Oro, who described it in uh, the, the the context of a Spotify Wrapped. I heard it. I plugged my headphone in just enough time to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Randall's invention is uh, an audiobook. <laughs> of course. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And we had uh, shit. I fucking immediately forgot. Oh, Tom. No, let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. You. Oh, I'm not uh... <laughs> welcome, welcome to the rest of the stream, everybody. <laughs> 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 Listen, my brain's like a shot glass and like it spills over eventually in the short term. So like I get that like enough has happened that Mm. it's just kind of spilled over. Two people gave me answers between now and then and I can't remember. It was a reference that that, that they were talking about. Robot robot haiku. (laughs) Robot haiku. (laughs) Robot haiku. There we go. Oh my goodness. Wow. It really does not take long for me to forget things. (laughs) Um, Okay. So we're gonna get on with our game. You guys have a, uh, a nice restful sleep. Fortunately, because like I said, you guys have been through some shit recently. Uh, mm-hmm. And I mean, whilst for us, it may seem like a long time ago that you guys were pilfering uh, an Obaskir royal family tomb. Uh, in game, that actually wasn't that long ago. Um, so, I mean, a lot of shit's happened in the last, let's say, couple of weeks yeah. uh so you're up for some well-earned downtime so what we're gonna do is assuming this this is i mean i've spoken to one or two of you 
individually, but let me know if there's anything you would rather do. I was thinking maybe it would be good for our characters to have a little bit of downtime, maybe like a couple of days off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Please. I think Nerly would much enjoy <clears throat> remembering who she is again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. So I was thinking maybe our, our characters have a couple of days off um, in the in the tavern where you guys have already earned your keep uh, just for having completed, you know, a quest for them, um, which you were reimbursed for. But you know, they'll they'll give you some some you know places to stay for a little bit longer. Um, and in the meantime, Nerdy can regain their memory. Fingers crossed. Um, we know Haiku is now no longer grumpy. Uh, and Randall can get some reading done if Randall wants to get some reading done. Um, Tonight, we will have Oro's performance. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, you guys are up to whatever you want to do. Why don't you tell me what your characters would be doing most likely in this scenario where you've kind of, as a group, decided, let's take a couple of days off, you know, let's you know, enjoy some some good food, a comfortable bed, and hope that Neroli starts remembering things <laughs> soon. <laughs> Mostly. I think uh, Haiku would feel like the the uh, horror something with all the miserable bastard that's been lately. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to offer any help in preparation for the show, you know, if you want any <gasps> anything making, props oh. or a set, I don't know. <gasps> oh, a set. I mean, I did have plans to. This is Ari speaking. I did have plans to ask Haiku if they wanted to be a part of the performance in some way, whether that, whatever they wanted to do. Mm, please, I'm down for that. Okay, okay. Well, let's both have a little think then, whilst everyone else is talking about their little things, because I, I haven't <laughs> thought of anything yet. <laughs> I do. Uh, okay, you guys have a think. Randall, Nurley, what are you going to do with some downtime? So I think uh, Randall probably be well, like reading, reading the the tome, mm-hmm. but then maybe he's getting a bit like itchy because just sort of like sat around not doing anything, um, and go and speak into uh, his old pal Ron in the tower. See if there's any just like you know any clerical work that needs to be done. Looking for some clerical work, <laughs> just like you know, tedious, mind numbing, distracting. <laughs> but it's been a while since you've done any tedious. Yeah. Form filling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're excited about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Honestly, that was These me the other day. Forms I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kawaii. Kawaii donated or tipped forty pounds to help pay for any last-minute Christmas decorations or gifts. Oh, oh that's very bless. sweet of you. That's Thank you, Kawaii. Very that's very sweet. I go appreciate it. Fuck out of you. Thank you. Just very nice. Yeah. Jenny and I were talking earlier about how uh, so because we're gonna go we're gonna go visit my family for a little bit before Christmas. I've got some some young nieces, and on Jenny's wish list for a bit has been uh, warrior wear. And we were like, oh maybe 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 we get this as an early Christmas present, and we take it down to see my nieces, <laughs> and we play some warrior wear. <laughs> I was very excited. Christmas is gonna be good. <laughs> very generous of Kawaii. Um. What's okay. Wear? You've never played Warrior Wear? Mm-mm. My goodness. Uh, it's like a, a, a tons and tons of mini games that are like a couple of seconds long. Like you have like a couple of seconds each time and they are extremely zany. They are very odd. You very rarely know what you're supposed to do until you've done that mini time, mini, mini like uh, mission a couple of times. And as time goes on, they get shorter and shorter. And it's based on like Wario from uh, the Mario universe? Is it Mario universe? Yeah, yeah. Mario, yeah. Uh, I don't know mm-hmm. enough about WarioWare. <laughs> War- WarioWare. <laughs> it sounded like a clothing thing to me too. And so then when you said something about playing it, I was like, oh. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's very fun. It's very, it's, it's very hectic, um, but it's also like, it involves like quite a lot of like movement often. Um, I mean the Wii one did at least anyway um, but it's just the kind of stuff that is very fun to play mm-hmm. um, because Jenny and I played the demo for it a little while back and it's it was it was it was <clears throat> crazy but fun uh, any whom <laughs> I 
back on back Bedroom. on back on <laughs> back on track. This is a Christian you Minecraft guys, channel, uh, Kawaii. Mm, are thinking okay. about your about your performance, what you're gonna do. Uh you're gonna go find some clerical work if possible. Read your read your new tome a little bit. What's Nerly doing? I think <clears throat> she'll wake up and read the note from Oro and feel a lot better about just generally kind of being so confused. Mm -hmm. And I think when everyone else is very busy, <clears throat> she's going to be sitting there and just trying desperately to remember anything, like going through the events of the last couple of days and trying to get them to spark any, si any type of recollection of like how she's come to where she is right now. And um, <clears throat> I think she's going to feel very like um, unsettled by the dream that she had because <clears throat> I feel like if there's any type of recollection of anything it would be living uh, in the enclave like just some kind of like vague idea that like she's away from home and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, so she'll mostly probably be unsettled and then probably like maybe a couple of hours before the actual like performance is supposed to happen she'll just be kind of like as she's like <clears throat> going through all the items in her bag and like turning over things she's going to come across the wand that she got from the circus she doesn't know she got it from the circus but it's just like this wand and after sitting with it for a bit she'll realize that it's for like minor illusion stuff and she's just going to wander out sort of kind of like i said very last minute and be like this is probably going to be useful <laughs> <laughs> well for the performance or for mm -hmm. adventuring in general oh so you're gonna you're gonna offer up the wand of minor illusions for, mm -hmm. for the oh, performance shit. that's very helpful very helpful okay right so are you when you're when you're kind of like trying to ruminate and remember anything that you've got in your noggin are you writing these down anywhere i think or she wouldn't at first thinking? but then when she starts going through her stuff she's going to find her little prayer book and like notebook that she's been writing in mm -hmm. and um it's not going to really like jog too much for memory memory because it's more about <clears throat> like self-reflections and thoughts about selene but she'll start doing a little bit of like cataloging there mm. okay okay all right um i like to think that and, and correct me if i'm well, i'm gonna ask you instead when nearly has her full memory how does she reflect on her time with her with the enclave where she grew up is it fondly i think she's very conflicted because <clears throat> yeah. there will be people that she thinks of fondly sure and experiences that she'll think of fondly but the more she learns about it the more it seems like an overall bad thing so and when she's when she's reflecting on it now as someone who doesn't remember everything is the feeling more nostalgic safety you know family happiness or is it more tainted by like is she is she remembering the the, the threat of on her life before she left or is she is so. that rose tinted glasses because she's not remembering everything yeah i think that she wouldn't remember that because that sure. would be a core part of like who she currently is so i mm -hmm. think it would be some sort of vague sense of like home and family but not not super strong because she doesn't like have the like full breadth of her memories so it would be like um, homesickness for like a place that she can barely remember. Sure. Oh, deep. Okay, cool. Uh, good answers, good answers. Right. So Randall spends some time uh, and and is very joyfully mm -hmm. recruited by Rondal. Randall and Rondal. Uh, <laughs> oh no, Randall's Ron going to leave us and go join <laughs> Rondal. And... <laughs> They're going to start their own kind of business. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be something really boring Ran, in accounting. Ron, Ron, Ron. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you get a chance to have a, have a small chat with, with Rondal. Uh, and actually, you guys have quite a lot in common. Uh, turns out he's actually a big fan of filling out the paperwork and that kind of stuff. And he, he reads a lot in his in his own time. Obviously, that's... <laughs> oh, Zasleen. Zasleen, thank you for gifting five subs. That's for kind of you. Oh, cool. So many generous gobos in the community. Mm -hmm. So many generous gobos. Gosh darn it. Kapow! Oh shit! Tom used some of his Kapow. points to redeem a god. Oh shit! Today's the day. Double <laughs> gobo. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I have. 
I'll put it on the spreadsheet. Don't oh, you is worry. that MC? M Sizzler? Is that MC? Yeah. And the light bulb's in there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cute. Okay. Uh, Randall's gonna leave, not have some sovereign glue and an immovable yeah. rod have anything to say about that. Randall leaves on the back of Haiku's shell, stuck. <laughs> oh, is this, is this when Haiku starts collecting people? Doesn't <laughs> I wouldn't surprise it's a spin-off series. Dark that's, what spin-off. That's, what, that's what the part yeah. is. Um, <laughs> okay, so you, 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 and, you and Ron will actually get on super well. But so, it, so Ron isn't uh, upset that someone else is coming and taking away all this fun paperwork then? No. So though he, though he does enjoy it very much, he spends a lot of his time on his own. So he's happy for the company. Uh, additionally, because he's working on his own, there's, there's been a bit of a backlog. And whilst he, re- he he appreciates that it's fun and it's good work and he enjoys it, he actually has some boring other stuff that he needs to do, like, you know, running the the, the town's, you know, legal mm-hmm. system. Uh, so that, that means that he doesn't get to spend as much time doing the fun bit as he'd like. And practically, it is helpful to have someone else do some of the work. Um, so Randall doesn't get to see any of the necessarily the super juicy documents right. uh, because, you know, it might be pertaining to anonymized data or whatever gdpr's come in um <laughs> but but there's some there's there's it's plenty plenty of work for randall to kind of just be mulling over uh some of the notes that he's been reading from the book in fact you dreamt last night um whilst it's very common for nearly to be dreaming for the rest of us maybe not quite so much and for randall you dreamt of once again you had this 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 image that you might recall from your last dream the last session that we played where you had this kind of um the book that you'd recently found open itself in front of you as it did so the cave ceiling that was above you kind of opened up to the night sky and you could see that each of the stars in the sky above you was actually some kind of story and that people had been on the surface this entire time almost like there were some kind of secrets secret stories hidden away um, and it seemed as if that the book was kind of showing this to you. In uh, this dream that you have, you uh, you hear a voice say a very particular phrase, and the pages of the book are filled with reams and reams of text after the word is said. Or not the words are said. The words are said, uh, and the words are. I'm gonna. Have to, I'm gonna fuck these up. Uh, Ot kappa pro ulibaths otasessa. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste that to you specifically. Thank so you. you. That. <laughs> <laughs> Randall's next question. <laughs> I got the first one. I just I saw like, the oh, look on Dox's face. The like. There you go. There you go. So you see, you see the, uh, you hear this, you hear this phrase, and as you hear this phrase, you see that the, um, the, though the pages of the book had words written in them, you'd Mm. recognize that they were previously written by someone else. Someone else had been using this as a journal. And as these words are said, the text that was there originally, written in ink or, you know, some old graphite pencil or whatever, had melted away, almost burned off. There's a ripple across, like, it's almost as if there is some layer of paper that is being burned off by fire, leaving some kind of pristine writing underneath it uh, that kind of glows very gently in the night sky. Uh, and as it does so, you get this this deep sense of having unearth some incredible esoteric knowledge and then you awaken Jesus. so okay. your your downtime with rondel gives you some time to mull that over <laughs> okay i mean i feel like the one of the first things Randall would do would say that phrase to the book in the morning that's what rondel yeah. would do okay not rondel uh, 
Rundle, yeah, give me I the book back. You accidentally, you accidentally, you accidentally, <laughs> accidentally leave with the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you leave the book behind, you tell Rondel about it. Rondel says the magic words whilst you're, uh, whilst you're left behind. <laughs> uh, okay, so in the morning then, if you get an opportunity, you dream this dream sequence and you, you have these words still fresh in your mind and you think, fuck, better either get these mm -hmm. down or say these before I forget them. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to say what I said. In, Ron, in uh, Randall's voice. Damn it, now Randall. Randall's going to be in my head <laughs> forever. Randall's voice. I'm never going to get Randall out of my brain. I Four months myself. from now, we're going to find out that they're actually like estranged cousins. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Branches of the family disagreed about the family name of heritage, Ronald <laughs> Randall, and the pronunciation of their last name before spelling was invented. So this is like a centuries old like branch of the family that is like Damn just it. been reunited on accident. <laughs> I love that. Through, the, through their love of paperwork and my inability to stop saying their fucking names <laughs> to the <ground> <laughs> Okay. Right. So the words are Ot Kappa Pro Eelubafs Otasessa. Otasessa. Uh, it's it's tough to say, which is why I tripped over it a bunch of times too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Randall says those words, and it's as if uh, almost exactly as in your dream, the mm. top of the page melts away. Literally, a fire is set on the book, but it is a kind of a, a sort of a, a smoldering ember that kind of peels back this layer. It's almost as if you've got this old dusty tome, and suddenly all the dust is just burnt off. And as it kind of ripples across the page, you see that there are words written underneath. And you are going to spend a fair amount of time reading this book, my friend, because every single page that you seem to find is written in this beautiful dark ink that kind of has this very slight blue tinge to it hmm. that is in the typography is incredible uh it is as if someone has the same way that you would have at the monastery spent days and months and years even pouring over the same stories and drawing them up not just as a formal document but also as art almost uh and it is uh, page after page after page of stories that have been untold, things that have you've never heard of any of these characters, any of these people. Many of them refer to uh, local histories and, uh, and and landmarks that you've seen or passed or heard of. Um, how is the kerning? <laughs> the kerning is perfect, <laughs> um, and it is it is you've you've stumbled across a treasure trove of of just the, the, in this one book alone you have higher quality kind of content than you've seen in the entirety of your monastery whoa i think uh rondel might get stood up then <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe let's say that you hung out with rondel before you had this dream <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> okay um so you Whilst you're in possession of this book and whilst you have access to this book, we'll have advantage on every single history check that you make on any topic. Yep, this is my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for you. <laughs> it seems as if every time you, uh, you know, you put the book down and you, you put your uh, you know, the, the bookmark in it and then you go off and maybe you have some lunch or something and you come back to it. Uh, though the page itself is, is saved, it seems like the pages either side are of completely different stories that they were previously. Um, though uh, you, you think, okay, well, I was reading this one story about someone called uh, let's say Rindle. Uh, Rindle. <laughs> I was reading the story or, about or, someone or, called Rindle. I was calling, reading this somewhere about Rindle. <laughs> At no point does Randall think this is suspicious. <laughs> wait, wait a second. That's the name I was going to use for my audiobook. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and it's missing because it's now turned to something else. But you start thinking to yourself, where is it? Oh, you start paging through it. Oh, I was looking for this, this story about someone called Rindle. And then there it is, sure enough, in front of you. Um, so you've, I mean, you found a treasure trove of esoteric knowledge. 
at some point during your time here, uh, whilst you're hanging out into the Randall first, <laughs> whilst you're hanging out with any, any of the other of your party members, um, let's say that you spend a little bit of time with Haiku whilst Haiku is uh, helping to prepare mm-hmm. for the for the performance later today. Uh, the, they can't read a single word on the page. It all seems to be in kind of garbled script. Make any sense to me. Oh, but it's the, just the most fascinating stories on, like, every page. It's, it's, it's Rindle. And it's Rindle. <laughs> Randall. Are you, are you, uh, are you feeling good, Randall? You yeah. feeling okay? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. It's great. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I've, I've had issues with books lately. I can help if, if there's something wrong. <laughs> No, there's nothing wrong. I'm just, I mean, I mean, I'm, I might lose some sleep, but I'll be. Oh no! You just hit Aura in the background. No. <laughs> oh, not <it's fine. laughs> again. Oh, the book. <laughs> you, just, you just dealt with one of these. <laughs> <laughs> just begun Aura's crusade against literature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Civil war within the party. <laughs> So yes, I feel like maybe Randall will have uh, their hands full. How big is the is the book? Is it like, <laughs> uh, it is it is a grimoire. Yeah, they're normally quite big, right? Yes, it is a. I mean, it's not it's, okay. it's not this big. It's, it's, it's not like A five. <laughs> no, it's not A five. It's 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 a it's a, it's a it's a it's a big chunky book. Okay. So it wouldn't be like practical to just have it like on me. You have to live in the bag of holding. I mean, it depends on how comfortable you are with. <laughs> how heavy is it? No. I... A little bit of heft. It's I not. Do. It's not impractical to, to carry. I think. Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. I can't hear it, but I can hear it in my head since I've heard it. Thank you, Anonymous. Oh no! You success. Success. We need a history check song now. The, the <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just love the idea of Wait, Doc's going, perfect success. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a perfect success. No. Um, but I think Randall might go, um, hi, could, could you could you build like a little holder for this? Because I want to keep it like on me, but I don't want it to get damaged. Like a, a, a stand or a case? Yeah, like a case, but like a backpack, like a wear. Oh. But it like can protect fall, it and so you it doesn't just... get like wet or damaged. Maybe you could attach the book to the backpack so you don't have to take it out, just open the backpack. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> I gotta gotta finish up stuff for Aura first, then. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's nice. No more look stuff. No more book stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Must protect the books. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Right. Well, you. uh, We'll we'll say then perhaps after the performance, you have some time put aside, perhaps a day, where you kind of just tinker and see if you can find something that uh, that that works for Randall's commission. Okay, fantastic. Very good, very good. Well, uh, the day starts to roll by. Uh, Randall's. Let's say this is this is this is you know, day two. Uh, where we're talking <laughs> with Randall and Randall and Haiku. Uh, but we'll go to our to our performance for the the night prior because we're getting a bit confused with time now. Uh, <laughs> so, the evening starts to uh, to encroach upon you as you have been preparing all day for your performance what are what are you going to do how is how is haiku contributing to the uh to the oro performance uh i like the idea of giving oro the immovable rod i'll let jenny describe that well Mm. if jenny wants to do that sure yeah (laughs) yeah i think beforehand i'd give like a like a health and safety briefing on how to safely (laughs) use the immovable rod Yes. Two hour lecture. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dangerous business. <laughs> uh, and I uh, would have offered 
to build like a little springboard or catapult type oh. thing. A chump. Oh, yeah. Doesn't only have to be little, it has to be big. Yeah. Little jump pad. Yeah, yeah, little jump pad. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <clears throat> okay. All right. Is, uh, does Zoro have any uh, ideas for any other way to include Haiku in the performance, or is that the, the limit to Haiku's um, involvement? Well, Aura's pretty comfortable with doing performances where she's like pretending to fight someone. Mm -hmm. So maybe if there was like a small fake fight between Aro and Haiku, and it ended in Haiku like throwing the immovable rod and like Aro catching it, and then it going from there. And then I I think it'd be cool to do some like like she throws it, and wait it, is it, it like a button on the immovable rod? Yeah yeah yeah. Okay, so it'll it'll be like uh you throw it to me and I uh, stop it in the air, and then I'm like on the jump pad and I jump on the jump pad, f do a flip around it, unhook the button, like jump off something else, put the immovable rod somewhere else, do another flip. Or would it oh stay there God. and then press the button and then and, and, like keep doing that a little bit and like oh. using the jump pad? Oh, <laughs> I like okay. that. I love it. And all then all. if Neroli wants to help with the minor illusions, little little dudes, <laughs> what I'm thinking is we bring in some like foliage, some like bushes and like things that Ooh. some little uh, I don't know little baddies could come out of the bushes, and Aro could while she's doing the flips and shit like throw a dagger into them and then they're like oh no another one then oh, no. wow. flip and oh, no. like that wow. sort of thing wow <laughs> okay Absolutely. well i like this a lot it's fantastic okay <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll fast forward a little bit to then instead then until we can continue your description of what's going on rather than us having to start you start you afresh yeah unsurprisingly the tavern is packed you were bigged up quite you know quite a lot by Randall last night. It's <laughs> true. Randall was I'm very expecting it again also. That's the one job I give oh. to Randall. I'm like, ignore this book stuff. For like an hour. Man. Yeah. Randall's the hype man. <laughs> All right, fantastic. <laughs> so unsurprisingly, it is packed. And uh, I mean, it almost, many people seem to be, uh, you hear a couple of mutterings in the crowd during throughout the day whilst you're preparing. It sounds a lot like everyone seems to think that the day before was a PR stunt. <laughs> uh, for your, for tonight's performance. Oh, um, so, are you charging, or is this is this free? No, free. But there is a bucket. <laughs> is it free. There is a bucket. bucket. Okay, okay. Tip. Okay. Is, <laughs> whose job is it with the bucket? Is, is Randall hype man and bucket, bucket collector? <laughs> yeah, all that. Or nugget. Maybe yeah, both of you can go around. Nugget. Oh, nugget. Oh, nugget, yeah. Oh, yeah, nugget, nugget going around, around with the bucket in their mouth like a flower <laughs> bat. Just like... I love that. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, fantastic. So I, so you've got uh, nugget going around. I like to imagine nugget with a with a bucket in their mouth, mostly because it's probably quite intimidating, so people probably feel a little bit like they have to, okay. they have to know. Okay. Tips and oh, courage, all of my courage is underscored. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of Nugget doing their best to like look sweet though, and so it's like a little bit of a smile, but then you can see teeth, and so it's yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so we've got uh, Nugget slowly plodding along the ground, <laughs> tips encouraged. Um, and we've got our pyrotechnics slash, you know, uh, illusion wand in the back corner over here. We've got stage, Randall going around, team. hyping. Woo, woo, <laughs> the best performance I've ever seen. Oh my God. Oh. Hasn't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> Haiku's ready for the, you're well practiced for Haiku's role at the beginning where Haiku comes in and does a little bit of a, a tussle and then throws the immovable rod and we have like you said like an end game this really cool moment where you like catch the immovable rod in your hand and then you let go and it's still there whoa what <laughs> oh my god how is it stationary oh my god magic uh, and then you get this incredible performance where you start back flipping you do all sorts of uh, my favorite idea is that we were discussing earlier is that during your performance you see somebody in your in the crowd that's just like eating an apple or whatever and whilst in the previous evening the fake Oro was throwing around wooden knives and you could clearly see that they were wooden i like the idea of you grabbing someone's apple and like cutting it in front of them to prove that the authenticity <laughs> of the knives before you start like throwing them around and stuff um 
so I mean, this is uh, without a doubt going to be a successful performance. Fuck you. All right, there's no, there is no way that this bombs. You don't bomb an Oro performance. All right. No, no. I'm gonna ask for a performance check with advantage to determine just how much you raise in tips, oh, and shit. just how overwhelming the uh, the performance, uh, the the response to the performance is. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I think it might be quite good. <laughs> Give me money. It's like people's keys Jesus. to their houses in there. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. House. <laughs> Someone puts like their baby in. Party. <laughs> party. Everybody take your own keys back, please. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, with a casual 29 roll, there is. The, the, the roof is officially raised as every single person gets up. Massive round of applause. Uh, woo! Wait, so we have got our <laughs> rowdy tavern in the, in the background. There's our rowdy tavern music. Tavern Great. excited. <laughs> Can I thank get you for the going. 500 biddies. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you. Hope you're well. Give me the rowdy tavern. Otherwise, I don't get believe it. it. The rowdy tavern. <laughs> My immersion. My immersion. There we go. I'll take your key. <laughs> Are you getting Rowdy Tavern? Yes. Okay, I'm mm. not getting Rowdy Tavern, but I'm gonna believe it's there. It's getting Rowdy in here. Yeah, you can hear it a little bit. It's starting to, it's starting to get up. Okay, that's enough for me. You're, uh, you're getting some Rowdy Tavern. That's fine with me. Um, so people are saying, "Whoa, that's amazing!" There are, uh, by the time that the bucket comes around to you, in fact, Nugget has come to you, put down the bucket beside the stage, found another receptacle, and then started bringing that around instead. Oh We're rich. We're retiring. Because the, bucket, the, the, bu <laughs> the bucket is already full at this stage. Uh, there is, when you start to kind of, you see that as the bucket's going around, that it's got, it does have other bits and pieces in it. You've been, you're being tipped in all kind of coin coinage from many different realms as far as you can tell but there are there is there is things like uh you know people with written i love you notes and stuff like that on their <laughs> on like post-its and stuff that have just been slid into there just as exposure <laughs> <laughs> at one point you find one of your own daggers that's been placed back in there for oh, some reason nice. like, this is going. <laughs> someone's placed it back <laughs> Um, and there is uh, an, just an out, over, <laughs> overwhelming amount of... of Someone's uh, AirPods are in there, Anna's like... <laughs> <laughs> There's a rindle in uh, here, oh my god. There's a rindle, <laughs> oh, brand new. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is, it is a, a, an outrageous success. Everyone is incredibly impressed. Um, and as the kind of the, the cheers start to kind of die down a little bit as the performance is over and you start taking your bows and you bring Haiku up on the stage and Haiku bows and uh, just in the background you can see Nerly waving. <laughs> <laughs> um, after the, the poor performance, tons of people come up over to you and they're just like, that was incredible. Oh my God, how did you do with that? How did you do the catch the, of the stick thing that you had? That was amazing. Wow, you are incredible. How can we How can we ever see you again? Where are you going to be performing? And um, you, it's there are so many people that are coming up to you. There are one point uh, you have the uh, Kale Crestbathon innkeeper dude come over to you and he kind of just stands in front a little bit. He's a big burly dragon board dude so he kind of just makes some space between you and the crowd and he says okay enough enough give us some space give us some space enough 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 um, and uh, somebody slips by him whilst he's trying to like break the crowd up uh, and it's uh, uh, this kind of a little bit better off looking gentleman um, who, who kind of has a, has, a, has a very fancy cane and a monocle uh, and he kind of he, he walks over to you and he says, "I've got a children's party coming up. Can I hire you for children's parties?" <laughs> where? My great niece. Where? Where is? Where is your? Where? Where would this be? Oh, well, we, we'll be doing it here in uh, in Mouth of Gargoyles, most likely. Yes, sometime oh. in the summer. Oh, in the wait, what's it now? What? what? It's, all, it's almost summer. Oh. Uh... I mean, what's the payment looking like? <laughs> it's his name, Mono, last name, Polly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the Monopoly man. But he is, he does, he does, you, I mean, you've, you've seen some, uh, some flush, flush with cash fellas, the circus before, and you can, you know, pinpoint this guy's flush with cash. 
Well, um, I'll name your price. Oh no, Oro has no concept of money. <laughs> she just doesn't know. Um, I mean, I, I'm an adventurer now. I I don't do performing full time anymore, so I don't know where I'm going to be by next summer. Oh. But if you join my oh, well. mailing list, <laughs> which I'm now starting <laughs> up from this evening, <laughs> then I could send you a That's mail around the time. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, yeah, if you were there, maybe if I could guarantee your attendance, I'm sure that we could perhaps uh, go up to a. Uh, Say uh, five hundred gold pieces. Yeah, it should one, be free. One night's, one <laughs> night's. Uh... Yeah, free. Yeah. 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 Pretends well, to flip through diary. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we could yeah, squeeze yeah, you yeah. in. Let's do it. Yes, okay. Well, well, I mean, make sure that you're there. Yes, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have a courier send you the address. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Where, when? Where, summer? When in the summer? Yes, it's, it's, it's midsummer. Yes. Mid I don't know the precise dates of the children's birthdays. <laughs> oh, of course, <laughs> crazy me to think that. Okay, midsummer. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll just make sure that you got a, a, a copy of the address, and now I'll. Your name is Oro. Yes, spelt like this. Always spelt like this. I see. Oh, yes. No. Any 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 surnames, address, uh, organizations? Uh, Do you have an agent, maybe? Uh, who said? The PO box. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Randall, Randall, can I put uh, or can I put your place as as the address? Okay, okay, yeah, I'll put I'll put Randall's address on. <laughs> this is where I live most of the time. Fantastic, yes. Okay, well, okay, then I will have something sent that way, and you will perform for my great grand niece. It'd be a pleasure. Fantastic. Well, it'll be it'll be it'll be worth the money, I'm sure. After having seen that incredible performance, very amazing work, Thank really you. incredible. In fact, I would like to see it identically to that. Oh, identically? Yeah. Well, absolutely nothing changed. Okay. I'll yeah. I'll note it all down, all of it. Fantastic. Very brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Good work. Good work. <laughs> You'll be hearing from me sometime. <laughs> Okay, I like this vague answers. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Wow. Do, do we know your name? Can we know your name? No. <laughs> <laughs> My name is NPC No Name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess we need to find them again. Let's find a fantasy name generator. <laughs> <laughs> if you join uh, my carrier pigeon yeah. services <laughs> your very own collectible oro pigeon <laughs> hold on a minute <laughs> i need to draw that immediately <laughs> it's got like um like you know you get like the the fake glasses with the mustache on it it's got a similar thing but it's like bat ears and a little bat nose <laughs> oh, it goes on. oh that's adorable <laughs> Haha! <laughs> <laughs> like one of the names of the uh, of the guys I got in this fantasy name generator is uh, Pidgon. Like pigeon, but not. Like pigeon, but not. But gone. So his name is Pidgon Rutsk. Pidgon what? R Rutsk. Rutsk. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, got it. Oh, I'm missing my bookmarks, like I should have done a million years ago. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pidgon Rutsk. It has a tiny knife in its harness, yeah. <laughs> so have, knowing knowing that um that this gentleman has just asked for an exact performance, can I use Randall's amazing writing abilities to note down exactly what he saw? <laughs> sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Which I definitely do not possess, but Randall does. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote out a, a description of what happened so that we would have it. <laughs> oh, nice. We're all on the same page. I just wrote the same performance. Check and write it. <laughs> it should be can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Amazing. So, yes, it was very, very, it went down very well. Uh, and all in all, you think you've, I mean, you know, you're in a, you're in a, relatively small town um in the you know along a, along a trading route but it's not populated by many traders in fact you've, you've not seen any other adventures apart from your uh people that you found that 
<laughs> dead in almost in a con in a, in a dungeon. Um, so you get a, a haul of about two hundred gold pieces in total, which is pretty sizable actually, uh, considering all of uh, you know where you are. Um, and you uh, you are told by Kes- Kale Crestbathon that you'll have a uh, a place to stay for the next week if need be. Sick. Hell yeah. We're eating good tonight, everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Egon Munsk. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Damn, that would have been so good. Oh. More like Jeez. Ego Munsk. <laughs> oh, blah, blah, blah. It'll do. Okay. You are late. It's okay. So, uh... For the rest of the okay. evening, whilst you're whilst you're chilling out and, and you know you get some meals in you, uh, drinks are ordered to your table and arrive without you having purchased them. Oh shit! Um, it's like the Witherspoon's you know. app. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Witherspoon's app. <laughs> uh, people just people seem to be buying you drinks and, and sending them over to you. Hell yeah! By the end of the night, you are either surrounded by full drinks you've not touched, or you are very drunk. <laughs> Or both. Or both. <laughs> <laughs> or you've, or you've been, you know, you've been hanging them out to all of your, your, com- your compatriots. It depends on what you want to be doing with it. How yeah, does your evening go? Sharing them out for sure. Or doesn't well, she like drinks well, like a tiny bit, but she's not a lot. So she'll have a little bit and be like, "All right, I'm feel tipsy. This is fine. I'm, I've got all the food I want. I don't care about drink." <laughs> <That much. laughs> all right. Okay. And Nugget is uh, is just like coated. The entire face is just like gravy and like bits of like <laughs> like bread and stuff is just down their face. Um, the rest of you imbibing. Yeah. What does that mean? Some drinking. It means drinking. Oh yeah yeah. Yeah. Um, Neroli has reverted back to her milk and water ways um, because the knowledge of trying wine has dissipated. So she'll be. Only drinking milk and water again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, donate some to the Cormier Identity <laughs> Theft Program. Oh my god. <laughs> That's cute. That's so good. <laughs> well, I mean, you are uh, provided with more than enough food and drink for the evening. Uh, those of you who drink have an opportunity to get a little bit merry with your compatriots uh, and you know you have a, have a wonderful evening is there anything in particular that you guys want to do as you wind down from this day does Randall talk any more about the book uh, I don't know if he talks about it but it's it's probably like on his lap or like to his side or something it's just like there he probably has like one hand on it like all of the time or you just see like his hand is in the bag of holding. It's just like, it's just like <laughs> holding in the, book. the bag. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. If uh, if at any point uh, like she has the opportunity to notice that and ask a few questions and he tells her a little bit about it, I think she would suggest that it was probably like divinely placed there for you to find because that's of course the thought process that this version of Nerly would have. Yeah, this ner- version of Nerly hasn't seen any cursed books or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, and especially, How? well, I don't know. Never mind. That would probably be something more in depth. They would talk about it. So never sure. mind. Well, has um. Oh no! I had something in my brain. I had a really good question. Now it's gone. About the book. About about reading the book. About. Oh, uh, how does Randall react to to Nerly's suggestion that it was divine intervention? Uh, I don't know if he's like surprised because I feel like that's like a common storyline. Like, you know, like, oh, there's this normal person and then oh, divine intervention. Um, so it's not like a completely foreign concept to him, but it's always been. You know, someone long ago or far away kind of thing, rather than it being mm. like, oh, like, no, this is actually like what it actually what it is. So it's probably a bit, a little bit overwhelming, maybe. 
But that's also probably why he has his hand on the book, like, permanently. Just like, mm. are you sure? Is it, like, disappearing? It's just, like, it's definitely there. Mm -hmm. If she were to ask him what, um, like, what reading the stories are like, or what, like, his impression is, how would he describe it? Uh, like, full of wonderment, full of kind of just, uh, yeah, like, new, new, new knowledge. Think, like things that possibly no one has known before. So much potential. Yeah, just like there's just so much to know. There's so many things to read, and so many links between so many different stories. Oh, there's just so much. <laughs> so you're happy reading this book? <laughs> okay. I prefer this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Awkwardly Definitely looks aware. Sounds... It definitely sounds like something that, um, you know, uh, uh, somebody powerful who is watching over you would do. Well, maybe I'll find out more if I if I keep reading. Maybe, maybe some more insane. Yeah, but get your sleep too. You know, the book will still be there in the morning. Looks no, at Haiku. Keep looking at Haiku. <laughs> 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 Randall hadn't even thought about the fact the book might not be there in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> she just sleeps holding the bag yep. of holding. Yep. It's a body pillow now. <laughs> bag of body pillow. That's the next thing. That's the next thing for Haiku to invent. <laughs> Somehow uh, I'm not going out the slippery slope. <laughs> bag of holding that's like anime shape. Oh. <laughs> the bag of body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more of a body pillow with a book in its face, like. Is it... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I um, uh, I ask uh, Randall, can I put the the money that we got in the in the bag? But, oh, I mean, but it's like I feel like it's mostly your money. I mean, I but we, we share it, you know. I also, mean, it's I, a lot just... of like change. Like, I'm, where am I going to put it? Uh, right. <laughs> we need to go to an exchange place. Oh, we don't get that right now. <laughs> need to find one of those machines in the market somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I can put it on my sheet if you want. And I'll just uh, note I'll it. Put it. I'll put it. I'll put a separate note on the on the bag of holding. Section. Okay. Uh, so Randall does want to like sort out money things, but. Probably doesn't feel like in the middle of a very busy tavern is the right place to count out literally <laughs> 1500 GPs worth of gold between us. <laughs> we, we just put Oro's 200 gold in its own little bag with a little tag that's like Oro's 200 gold and then put it in the bag of holding so when you reach in and you're like I want Oro's 200 gold it just comes out the little bag. <laughs> <laughs> That 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 has such interesting uh, connotations for like how bag of holding bags of holding work because there is there is the concept of essentially what you put in there, you bring out by thinking of what it is that you want to bring out. Mm -hmm. So how many bags of holding have been passed down generations simply because you haven't thought of the right thing to pull out? Like oh, I, oh. I, rather than thinking like oh I want to pull out like five hundred gold pieces, you just start individually individually take gold pieces at a time or is it that your hand is filled with 500 gold pieces and if you say oh if you, if you start you, you run out of gold pieces when you start pulling them out no more come out but if you say oh i want randall's 500 gold pieces suddenly there's more like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah or you can turn out a bag of holding to empty it that's very there you go very handy yeah that's true yeah. let's not do that <laughs> yeah, so don't do not that number of acorns yeah, in this one <laughs> Oh yeah, I was gonna say, be very careful. Not sprouts. Yeah, sprouts, sprouts not some acorns. messy bags. I don't know did, why I got. I'm not sure if Kate, Katie, did you see that? Wait a second. I think we'll be right back. So. Wait, do you want to do, do a bio break whilst I do this? We can do a bio, bio break whilst we do this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, It's good. It's good. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, if you're new here, we do very short bio breaks. I'm sorry, I'm just very excited. You'll see why shortly. Uh, our bio breaks are essentially, we go off the toilet, we do our business, we fill our drinks, we come back. There's not a preset time that we do it in. Uh, so have a stretch, come back and join us. I really hope someone joined just as you turned your camera and then started talking. So it's like, there's like a little, <laughs> a little Hello dick. There. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. <laughs> You've not been here before. 
<laughs> oh, good. <laughs> All right, bear right back, everyone. Okay. Cool look. Oh. Hello. I had, I had an item like that. A party came in possession of a book that was discovered to be a bag of holding. Was it dispelled the bag's enchantment and part of the relic sword came out? Wow, cool. Hiding things in plain sight at level two or three that they don't find until much later. That is cool. That is cool. I've decided that I'm going to open this, Jenny. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is Our it? You can't just saw, leave us. <laughs> uh, we, were, we were given some, some fancy chocolate by Font Fox. Our lovely pal. How do I open you, packet? Why <laughs> must you tease me? <laughs> There's no, like... Oh, there, is there a scene thing? There might be a scene thing. Damn you, fancy chocolate! Let me in! I don't want to rip it and make noise. I'm going to have to mute myself. <laughs> don't make noise! Hey, Noko, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to book our uh, boosters on Wednesday, by the way. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, that's what they announced this evening. Oh. Well, I think you can, you can get one Monday or Tuesday, you can find a walk-in site, but the bucket it opens Wednesday, because they want to get everyone done by the end of January. Interesting. Yeah, so I'll, be, I'll be straight on that in the morning. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seemsies. Try and get that done before we go down to see Tom's family would be a good idea. Mm. Yeah, Preferably yeah. I mean, we'll... Earlier in the week as well, just in case we don't feel too good. I don't want to be driving and feel... Like shit. 
Yeah, yeah, I'll have to, I'll, I'll book it for Friday after, well, not my birthday. Yes. <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Especially cool. after I felt last time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, decadent. What flavours ever? I have no idea. Ooh, chocolate. <laughs> oh, it says right, I am back. excited. Caramel delight, hazelnut swirl, angle sea, sea salted caramel truffle, luxury vanilla mousse, Ooh. hazelnut supreme, dark supreme. marzipan, and oh, there's a strawberry parfait. <laughs> I wonder which one he's gonna have first. <laughs> a strawberry parfait. Oh, can it? Congratulations on becoming a goblin. I assume that's not your first goblin. But I'll put it on the spreadsheet. Congrats. Oh. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, you you have hazelnuts, Jane? I got ice cream. Nice. Yeah, I wouldn't eat hazelnuts. Damn it, there's two chocolates in here that have gone to waste. Yeah, I'm sorry. Send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we went be right back, apart from, you know, eating chocolates, is for this. A little, little tree decoration. Oh little my god! Little bauble that we have for our Christmas tree. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I or did you find that? It. Did you make it? No, we found that in Wilco's. It's a little oh shop. Oh my god! Pretty pretty. <laughs> I love the little eyes in it. You <laughs> love it. <laughs> I thought you guys would enjoy it. It's uh, I, I specifically bought it because I was like, we have a lot of uh, sprouts in our. <laughs> In our D and D game, <laughs> top vegetable that. Top mm -hmm. vegetable is that what you just said? Top. Yeah. Really? Top wow, vegetable. you got a lot of uh, controversial food opinions usually. Mm. I think. I mean, I think to be I fair, that's a controversial. Yeah, that is quite controversial. <laughs> everyone has. Like, everyone talks about sprouts. Like they hate them, but there must be people that like them. Otherwise, people. Wouldn't I love talk. Brussels sprouts. They're yeah, so they're good. nice. Is that? Do you like them? Mm -hmm. The dogs, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think they're okay if you cook them right. They're very good. My um, my mum and my brother hate Brussels sprouts with a passion, but my dad will always cook them on Christmas Day. So they've come to it. I mean, because he's obviously he's always trying to make us eat veggies and stuff as we grew up, as you might expect. Uh, so on Christmas Day, they've now made a pact where they will eat one Brussels sprout, <laughs> and they do it at the same time. Each. Oh, right. Not oh. like shared. <laughs> <laughs> Split it in half. <laughs> one, 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 they've made the pact that they will have one Brussels sprout on Christmas Day and they will eat the exact same time. And they make such a dramatic deal of it. I, uh, like I, I I used to uh, have like a like a mini record thing I'd do every Christmas Day for most sprouts eating at Christmas Day. Oh, yeah? I haven't done it for a couple of years because for the last year it didn't end well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What do you mean it didn't end well? I ate 38 over dinner. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit! No, gen gen genuinely, I ate 38 in one <laughs> sitting. Yeah, I can imagine I how that might not end well. <laughs> Did you eat anything else? Oh, no, 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 I had a, the full the full turkey, mash, roasties, parsnips, beef, whatever. <laughs> roughly. And then Jesus. just slowly ate them over the course of an hour. <laughs> so you need to stop now oh for your own yeah. self-restraint. Yeah, yeah. but... Okay, gotcha. Oh my yeah. god. I think you've, nice. you've gone into the, <laughs> into the books as top sprout eater. No one else needs to compete with you now. <laughs> I can... don't advise it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, that's absurd. Yes, that's the little thing I wanted to show you. Anyway, get back to our game. <laughs> okay. Where the fuck were we? So you'd done your thing, you'd gone to bed. The next day we have uh Randall and Haiku are sorting out a, a some kind of book brace uh for for Randall's new passion. Book pack. Um a book pack. The fartiest coma there ever was. <laughs> <laughs> um, the rest of you have anything? So we can we can kind of bulk this into a couple of days now. If you guys are going to have a couple of days off, you're going to try and make sure that Nurly can get some semblance of her memory back. Um, so if you want to just come up with a couple of things, what are you doing during your time off? Um, or actually, it, it can be the same. 
as what you said previously, if that's all you want to do. Our religious family did start up a mailing list uh, and people could <laughs> apply because she's very conscious now about people stealing her identity. She wants people to know that this is where Aro is mm -hmm. when, you know, she'll be there type of thing. So she writes out a letter <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Notes everyone's names down. Huh? Starts huh? writing records, goes to... Uh, Randall and asks for bookkeeping advice on people's uh, <laughs> addresses and such. <laughs> okay, fantastic. How about Haiku? Uh, outside of the book pack. Mm -hmm. uh, oh wait, I have a, I have something that came to mind. Ah, yeah. Uh, so when Oro's writing the letters, still feeling guilty for being uh, a miserable git, uh, <laughs> I will use my new learned spell, Tiny Servant, to make little servants to help with the writing. Like, <gasps> a little, little, like a little tankard just sprouts arms and legs and can start writing <laughs> or something like that. Oh my god. Or actual stationing items, I think that makes more sense. You get <laughs> no, it's way cooler if you get a little tankard with a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> I hope it it's a little less, little, little less monotonous. Aww. Especially because if it's the pen that sprouts arms and legs and starts writing, you have to kind of wonder what. <laughs> it's just doing this. <laughs> There's like, <laughs> uh, like a little dance, and the words just appear. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. That's a lot. That's a lot cuter than scraping its arsehole against the floor, dude. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, uh, well, the rest of it. What are you? What are the, what are the rest of you doing? Um, so I think Randall's probably doing roughly similar stuff before. Yeah, reading book. When's like tired of reading? Does some does some scribing work? But maybe uh, he also. Um, like uh forms a letter to send back to the monastery mainly being like hey there's possibly like this untapped source of like finding out what's going on if you can go to like the local war wizard like there's one here in mouth of gargoyles who's kind of open to people coming and helping and i think if you work if you like if you help them out for a bit you might start being able to learn some things Ooh. Like, get some new get some new leads on stories and oh. goings on and Cool. It's uh, Randall writing home with some networking tips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other people that love paperwork to go and help all the war wizards who also like <laughs> paperwork but are a little overburdened. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. And Neroli is is it is Neroli doing anything new apart from you know scraping at the the barrel of her brain? I think after waking up another day and not <clears throat> having any kind of idea what's going on. She'll come down, she'll have breakfast, and she'll spend a little bit of time around everyone and then just get a little bit overwhelmed. And we'll go into the forest to look for mushrooms and other forageables because that's something that she could do to think quietly by herself. Okay, that's a good idea. I like that. So, whilst I, as Neroli are... goes out, I tell Nugget to watch over Neroli. Like, you go chill, you go hunt, but like, watch over Neroli. <laughs> <Just out. laughs> <laughs> You think Nerly would Nerly react badly to having Nugget's company? Like, so I, I'm thinking, would w which which scene do we prefer here? Nugget hiding the trees, foraging bugs, but silently watching Nerly to make sure she's okay, or is Nerly at this moment comfortable enough to just have the company of Nugget, who is, you know, kind of walking alongside you, flapping by every now and again? I think. Nugget can make his own choice, but I think Neroli would be fine with either. In fact, she's definitely very, like, Disney princess, make friends with the animals. <laughs> so if he just kind of showed up after a while, like, him expecting her to act normally, and then her just ending up being, like, giving him little scritches and letting him walk alongside of her, he probably wouldn't even necessarily, like, except that Oro has explained that something is amiss. It would just be, like, them, like, normal. She'd be like, oh, Hello, scratch, scratch, scratch. Yes, you can come with me and <laughs> just continue on. <laughs> oh, I like to think is at one point as uh, Nugget comes up to you, realizing after Aro is described, you know, that something is a little bit amiss, uh, Nugget's going to come up to you and then you, you feel like maybe Nugget's got something in his mouth 
So you put your hand out, be like, like you with the dog, you're like, ah, ah, uh-huh. give me, what give me. What do you have? What do you have? Uh, a nugget just opens their mouth and just drops a handful of sprouts into yours. Oh! <laughs> 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 of course, disgusting because they have bat saliva all over them. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Regurgitation them clean. <laughs> <laughs> and eat one and give him one. <laughs> as they you know, start to walk as you in guys, the ground. Yeah. You know, you, you bonded over your love of sprouts. Yeah. Uh, and 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 Nugget tries to express some kind of a you know affection through you know, vegetable snacks. Uh, <laughs> That's very cute. Okay. So as it gets to evening, you guys have kind of done your done your bits and bobs. Another day kind of passes fairly you know, quietly. Really, not a huge amount gets done. Apart from the bag that has finally been crafted for Randall, you have decided on at least one more day. How many how many hours are we at now on on Nerelli's memory clock? If the time frame we were given mm. is correct, not to yeah. say you're lying, but just say I don't know how this is yeah, going to yeah. work exactly. Six p.m. today is when it wears off. Okay, fantastic. Oh shit! In which case, you guys have reconvened. Uh, and are uh, and are sitting over and e- eating a dinner that was provided to you for free, um, and you know a, c- a couple of more drinks have arrived at the table, uh, and Nerdy is quietly pondering when she has a, a moment of. I, I-, I like to th- imagine that between Oro and Nerdy is Nugget sat between you, uh, like in this like booth that you've got, it's and both you booth. and like, Nugget there. Both, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Both of you are kind of like scratching on um, on on Nugget's head. I like to imagine that this is something that you guys have done before. This is a you know a moment where, uh, like Nugget has a has a very clear, uh, strong and greater connection with Oro and is resting on Oro. Like Oro is basically like bat head on here, uh, but like you've got like Nugget's butt. <laughs> 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 and Nugget's, no, butt yeah, yeah. Nugget, Nugget's expecting butt scratches from you, and he's just like <laughs> occasionally moving up to to uh, Oro's face and just giving a big lick, um, <laughs> and like nuzzling into into the lap. Um, and there's this, there's a moment of uh, a kind of a eureka almost where Nuri kind of finds herself in this deja vu moment of sitting around a table with Randall's head in a book. Uh, and uh, Haiku tinkering with something and a bat between you and uh, an Oro, big fluffy massive white and things just kind of ripple back into your memory and and suddenly uh, you are very conscious of the fact that you've been quite unwell for the last couple of days I think she'll just start sobbing oh. and probably like whoever's sitting to her left she'll like she'll probably first like start crying and just lean over on Nugget and and give him a few scritches and be like oh. <laughs> no I remember now oh no well you you remember all of us I think Aro starts crying too and like gives you a hug oh. and is like oh thank god <laughs> <laughs> are you okay do you feel alright I feel like I've been lost in a dream. Bad dream. So weird. It's like everything seems perfectly reasonable now, but... I don't know. Like being locked in a little room in your mind. Mm. And everything's hidden. And now the door is just open, and it seems like that's how it's always been, but it wasn't that way a moment ago. No. My head hurts a little bit. Understandable. I love the idea of them sitting in the middle of this tavern. There's like people around drinking and stuff, and then all of a sudden Jim starts like sobbing really low, <laughs> <laughs> just like laying on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I could cover us. I cover us from the ground. He's <laughs> walking, cover the entire booth. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys have a, a bit of a, a bit of a sob together in a cuddle, and you kind of start to feel a little bit more comfortable in the sense that you've regained your memories. 
I think she probably just gives everybody a hug. Just like gets up and walks over to everyone and it's just like (laughs) 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 Wow. Fortunately, Nuri's memory is back and now her memory is back and Haiku's grumpiness is gone. Things are starting to, to return to normal. Um and 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 with that, I mean, you have like maybe a, an hour of sitting around this table, kind of eating some food, relaxing. There's not a huge amount to do when you're an adventurer and you're not adventuring. Uh, so you just kind of sit down. You know, you're expecting to maybe travel today or tomorrow. Um, the door slams open, and you see on the top of the door frame a hand come in and push itself against the top of the door frame and pull in the greasy, slimy, wet, naked body of the troll that you saw on the bridge on your entry towards Mouth of Gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> Two more hands either side of the door frame and it pushes themselves in. They are way larger than this door and much, much taller than the, uh, the building will allow. So they are <laughs> okay, roll for initiative. <laughs> no. Is this a huge troll with his hand on top of his head and his other arms in his normal arm places? <laughs> normal arm places. <laughs> kind of, he, he's, he's very much slouched over as he's trying to fit inside this building that is not built for his size. And he stomps across the floor. You can see that though he has a small um, kind of like... Uh, uh, what am I thinking of? What's Tom thinking of? Here's the time. <laughs> what am I thinking of, Tom? Is it close? Uh, it's the, I'm thinking loincloth. 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 He's got his loincloth on. He's also got a satchel. Uh, it's kind of like just rope from one side to the other, like raw, actual, like hemp and rope. Uh, and a small, what looks like maybe a, a, a I'm going to say small, a large shell. Uh, that has been opened up and it's just one half of a shell and inside the shell is just tat. It looks like they've just collected a bunch of shit from random people who have passed them on the bridge. And yeah. as they do so, they kind of they, they, they push their way across the, um, the room and they seem to have no real courtesy for any of the individuals who are in between them and the bar. Uh, as they push tables aside and people fall over. Oh, jeez! Oh, oh, <laughs> um, they start to walk towards the bar and they slam their kind of conch shell almost on the top of the bar um, and they pour it out across the entirety of the bar. Uh, and you can see inside there's, there's like all sorts of rubbish, like bottle caps and, you know, like there's a... Uh, um, a clothes hanging thing and it's all just, just just rubbish in there that people have given them you can see that your torches are in there that you gave them as you entered the uh, the, the town um, and he just slams his hand on the table and says Grog give Grog <laughs> <laughs> and uh, shortly enough Kale, Kale requests Bathon comes over and just has this you can see there's this massive flagon that is put down on the table and it is the size of the entirety of the torso of Kale. It is huge. And it's like, essentially what's happened is someone's got a barrel, or, you know, a relatively small barrel, really, um, and put a handle on it. And they've filled it up with what you can only assume from the aroma at this distance that you can just smell over the troll uh, is gargoyle's bile. It's the drink that Nerdy had when she first arrived. Um, and the troll picks this up and just starts chugging it. The entire thing absolutely just chugging 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 until you can see that it starts to like pour down his front and he's already greasy and wet from living under a bridge um <laughs> you can see that it gets into like the moss that's in his uh chest, chest hair um before he finishes downing it slams it on the table and just goes <laughs> <laughs> For what feels like five minutes. <laughs> it's, it feels like a really long time. As he just belches and belches and belches. Before he kind of like scratches his own ass, turns around, uh, and then just sways a bit, giggles, hicks, <laughs> and then pushes his way towards the door again, leaving a trail of just knickknacks across across the entirety of the uh, 
of the bar. And he leaves without another word. Uh, Aura runs to pick up the knickknacks that he dropped on the floor, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I start uh, prestigitation cleaning everywhere uh, he touched in any capacity, <laughs> and like the aroma, getting rid of that too. <laughs> it's, thick, it's been a rough yeah. couple of days, and she's like not feeling so great right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thick is definitely the word that I would describe for the uh, the aroma in here. Yeah, wet and thick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, there's a there's a trail of moisture that's left in the on the on the pacing that the troll had taken from the door to the bar and outwards again, and you spend quite some time pressing digitating if that's what you want to do. Uh, Oro starts kind of poking around through and and Kale goes, oh, this is their payment. They've paid. They've oh, just paid a- in coppers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I mean, I was. It was just because we, you know, we might go back that way, and you know, I, oh, you I, wanna... or we wanted to pick stuff up that was on the floor, not stuff because I thought some stuff dropped on the floor. I mean, some stuff would have dropped on the floor, yeah, but it was it was stuff that he was planning on. Okay. Well, does any of it look Thanks. interesting? There is a there is a a absurd amount of just extremely common items you're seeing here there's some forks that you can see there's, a, there's an entire plate just one, <laughs> a huge actual intact plate wow impressive it, it seems to be made of china it does not look like it's got any kind of notable markings on it at all uh but you can see that none of this seems to have any you know monetary value really you're looking at stuff like one is a, a particularly nice rock uh you can see <laughs> damn it mm. I love that. um and you can see that there is like uh there's like a um like a quill that was used in there you can see that the end is, is pointed but no longer really usable because like all of the feathers are, are completely annihilated and it's just like the tattiest old thing ever it's essentially it really is like uh this troll has come in and paid in with just bare bottom currency and this this you know as is explained to you by kale it essentially says uh paying in pennies i remember once i was admonished by a toll road attendant about paying in pennies to which i responded is it still legal tender then you have to take it (laughs) yeah fuck (laughs) them Fair. Fuck him. I'm a toll troll. I get what you did there, Tom. Nice. <laughs> uh, regardless, he's, you know, he, he kind of just dropped a bunch of shit that is maybe in troll world. They've kind of just collected these things thinking humanoids seem to like these. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just trade them. So not, nothing uh, sticks out to haiku. Oh, not even remotely interesting okay. to Haiku. No, Haiku's got a nose for for the unusual, and not a single thing here looks even remotely interesting. Um, the only thing unusual is the smell, which hopefully is gone quicker rather than. Lower. Yes, it's, it's it's starting to dissipate. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, your evening is uh, it's quiet. Do you think that's some kind of arrangement that they have on purpose? I feel like maybe it's so the troll doesn't like beat them up or something. <laughs> I feel like that's probably it. Maybe. That makes more sense. Hmm. Maybe Do- he just likes collecting stuff. <gasps> maybe. Shit. I mean, I know it was a bit of a bit of a twat to him last time, but no. A bit. Maybe he just likes to collect stuff. I can, I can, I get that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you're more alike than you realize. Mm-hmm. Mm. Maybe you could be friendly next time. Wouldn't go that far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> Are we That's leaving tomorrow? <laughs> what do you want to do tomorrow? Are we supposed to go fight a dragon? That was the next on our bucket list, yeah. Mm-hmm. How many days has it been? Was it two? Three days? Since when? 
good point. <laughs> Since when? <laughs> Just in general? How many days have you been in general? How many days has it been in game since we all met each other? Come on, Dio. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I've been in a haze. It's been about three days, I think, now. Since it's happened. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We should probably make sure that they're still there and wanting help. If you feel up to it. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Randall, will you be ready to do that with your whole book thing? That'll be okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I can I can read them all. It's fine. You don't get motion You didn't sick? read any of it out loud, did you? <laughs> I didn't read any of it out loud, man. No. <laughs> Thinking of that them. was like a dream with some words in it, and I used them. You had a dream? Yeah. Who gave you the I words? Had two dreams. I had a dream. Oh no. The, the, the book gave me the words. It showed me how to use it properly. What like iconography is on the book? Is it changed now that the Randall is magic worded it? So the uh, the book itself looks like it's I mean it's got a, it's very nice binding, but it is not it doesn't have any noteworthy kind of icons or sigils or anything on the front. And as I said previously, a, a haiku notice is that when Randall is reading from it, you can see that there are. Uh, it just looks like gibberish to you. It does look like gibberish to me too. Mm -hmm. Does it have a script that's familiar? Or is it just like arcane nonsense? Uh, you can... What languages do you speak? Elvish, Celestial, and Common. Uh, you can notice that there appear to be occasional elven themes, but they're not. It's it's just like occasional letters in the script, and it's not an elven. The language isn't at least anyway, and you can recognize from having interacted with and being a spellcaster that there appears to be things that refer to magical terms, though it's difficult to determine whether or not this is a spell book. What language is that in, Randall? Why? Does Randall know? Like, it just... Does he even know it's in a different language? Is it just, like... No, it's just in, it's for you, it's common. But yeah, it's just... It's just... I mean, it's just common. Like, just, I'm just just reading it. It's not common. We can't read that. Or maybe the script is too nice and you can't... You can't read past the curly bits. What's that meant to me? Like trained eyes, <laughs> I can read it properly. It's serif. Mm -hmm. Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all wingdings. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I doubt that you have read some scripts that I, I might find challenging, but those are. Some of those are elvish letters. But it's not elvish. Well, I, I, it, it, it's just, it just looks like normal writing to me. I mean, I can, I can read elvish, and it doesn't, doesn't look like elvish to me. Just... What's well, definitely got some kind of magical property, then? I mean, obviously. Well, I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't read, we couldn't read Haiku's book. It was just moving, mm -hmm. moving ants on the page. Have to bring the book up again, don't you? <laughs> well, it's sort of a theme now. We're talking about books. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we mentioned the book because we were talking about books. <laughs> Not that big of a deal, Haiku. <laughs> Maybe be careful. I mean, considering who had it and that it somehow has ingratiated itself to you in the most wildly appropriate way possible. 
hasn't hasn't asked for anything. It's just yet. I mean, I'm just thinking of the the fungus thing, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather not think about the fungus, the fungus thing. But there's no, there's no mushrooms here. Right. Just you know. It's just, it's just stories. What did you dream? Why I, I, I dreamt about being in a cave, and then the, 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 the like the top of the cave disappeared, and then there was the stars, and each one was like a, a whole new world of untapped knowledge and stories that no one ever no one's ever even noticed in that way before there's just there's just so many of them maybe it came from her who from Selene maybe I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that if I read it, I'll find out. Maybe stars are other worlds, and you're learning about stories from other places. I mean, I haven't heard of any of the characters, either Ikatas, or any of the people, or any of the places or the times. Or... Speaking of, I had a very troubling dream. I'm just realizing now the implications of it. Do you remember when the moon disappeared? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll forget. I think the people who are chasing me caused that. What? And they told us they they told us that that courier told us that they were that there were people here looking for us. Uh huh. Remember? Mm -hmm. And I had a dream that there was a ritual, and I think it was them. It's hard to say. Everything's so fuzzy, but there was a ritual, and the moon disappeared. And I think it was them. Mm. I don't know. We need to be careful. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe we shouldn't linger too long here. Then I guess we should probably. Uh... Yeah. Maybe yeah. we should put out tonight. We've been here too long. Maybe. I mean, I guess it depends how you feel. If you want to get some oh. like some sleep. Can we, can we walk straight? We can make. Was that last somewhere. last night? <laughs> <laughs> can we walk straight or was that last night how yeah how drunk is everyone yeah. <laughs> that was last night okay <laughs> i see the days have blended together for you as well <laughs> <laughs> um and you said we have a little guide don't we that's the day's travel right so let me yep. just zoom out to where i totally know where we're at there it is it's like two days day and a half and a half, I think we should. It depends on where you, uh, if you're taking any pit stops. So, let's move this over here. Oh, change your tires. It takes about uh, two days to get from, oh, sorry, a day from here to Stagstead if you're staying there. Uh, oh, not bad. Um, and then half a day from there, or three quarters of a day from there to Dead Luck. Uh, and then from Dead Luck, it's a full day from there to Wendy. Okay. Probably go in the morning then. High, early morning. Yeah, early morning is probably a better idea just so we're well rested. And travelling in the daylight, not rather than the darkness. Although it doesn't matter for me, but for you. <laughs> <laughs> you puny mortals. Mm. <laughs> you travel comfortable at night, but you're probably right. I just feel like we've been here a long time. I mean, I don't mind. But we'd need to sleep at some point. Oh, of course. Yeah, I, I don't think it's safe to sleep in the in the woods, is it? If it weren't for the performance, I'd say this would probably be safer, but now it's pretty obvious where we're at. 
But maybe that's okay. Just for one more night. Another night we'll have. We could have. We could do what. We could do watches. Just want to sit down in the tavern. Yeah, we could do. Would... We could even leave earlier than, you know, usual time, as well. I suppose we can skip breakfast. <laughs> oh, fuck. We'll take some breakfast <laughs> with us. Sprouts. <laughs> True. Good night, Snorts. Sleep well. Good night, Snorts. Gobbly nose. <laughs> Okay, let's do that then. I'm gonna order a bunch of food before we go to bed. <laughs> Some like pastries and stuff. Ooh, that sure. cinnamon pull apart yeah. stuff. <laughs> you wish. I'm gonna order oh, go six of them. Oh my goodness. Right. Is that me? Oh. Is that 36 individual pull apart bits? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. No. laughs> Five full pull apart pans, one for everybody. <laughs> we just like hobble to bed with painfully full stomachs afterwards. Terror, yeah. don't share. <laughs> yeah, <don't laughs> okay. Well, uh, you have a, well, a nice restful night, but a, a early morning. Did mm -hmm. you wake up? Mm -hmm. Sore eyes. Uh, you, you meet, you congregate down in the uh, in the tavern, on downstairs once again. Uh, Kel Crespathon is <laughs> cleaning, <laughs> cleaning, still some muck off of the surface of the uh, of the bar. Um, and he's, uh, you're up early. Yeah, we we're, we're gonna have a early start. You know, I always go well, so uh, quick when you're traveling. You travel into it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, where are you going? We're letting we're letting the vibes take us, you know. Follow the vibes. Follow the vibes. Don't know what that means, but you've been you've been good to have here. For what I, yeah, well, I remember of our interactions, they were positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were. Um, I mean we're. With you guys gone, uh, we're going to have to start charging those other guys you were with. Oh, uh, how how much is it for them to be here for another week? Seven gold. I give I give him seven gold. No, no that's very generous of you. Um, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what. I'll write this down. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Does that cover food? Uh, yeah, go oh, breakfast. Do I know how much like a week of meals for two people would be at this place? Uh, you, you suspect it would probably be half of that, like four gold maybe. I'll put four more gold down. Uh, Randall's gonna walk to a nearby table and write a little note. Um. And to get a little bag out and note says something like, um, starting a, a new life can be expensive. Take this with you. And then he takes uh, 150 GP out of the bag and then puts that in the little thing, ties it up, and then takes it to the, I assume, the only other room that's like. <laughs> Got people in it. <laughs> yeah. Got people in it. <laughs> yeah. And like, leaves it there and like knocks on the door and like runs away. <laughs> Locked or run. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong Ikea dash. Has no connection to these people whatsoever, so it does nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, we these guys it. don't have that much of a connection to do with these guys either. These are just they showed up mm. once or twice, uh, completed some quests that these guys didn't complete fully. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's because the annoying one's not there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dangerous to go on the <laughs> I think it's more of the like the knowledge that that could have been us. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, is kind of the, yeah. Yeah, these are yeah. these are these are these are fellow adventurers mm -hmm. who have given up on the path uh, that you guys are on because of uh, you know, tragedy that has befallen them that could easily befall you as well. Um, and a little bit of guilt of knowing that we like rested one more night. <laughs> like... No guilt. <laughs> no there should be a little bit of guilt. guilt should be a little that. bit of guilt. <laughs> Choices have consequences. 
And the completionists meet the finisher. Alright, well. On the road again, unless anyone's got anything in particular they'd like to do whilst they're still in town. Nope. Okay. Randall, do you want to say goodbye to your friend? Oh yeah, Rondal. Randall. And Rondal. I think think it's best that we just walk away. (laughs) Absence makes the heart grow fonder, I understand. Mm -hmm. You're going to leave him a note? Oh, okay, I'll leave him a note. (laughs) <laughs> Our time together was short, but <laughs> I enjoyed the forms. <laughs> I have sent word to my monastery. They may send someone to assist you further. Wow. We'll always have the carbon copies. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need to you need to try and find Rindle, Rendle, and Rundle. Complete <laughs> the whole set. It. That's yeah, the next dragon, thing. We've, got, dragon. we've already got fucking Kulthic, Kulthic Salamore as one of the recurring uh, theme NPCs, well, we, and now it's going to be We had Rindle. a bunch of Randall-like people from when we were in... Oh, uh, where is it? Was it Marzember? Where, wherever we were, where there were the kids, and we were playing with like the kids and acting out a story. Yeah, Blue Stitch. Blue, yeah, there. There were already, for some reason, I can't, I have absolutely no idea why, <laughs> but there was like the same story playing out like every like hundred years with a different like Rendell or Ram, like. What? <laughs> definitely done this storyline before. I think that was before yeah, we officially found out about. Um, now his name has been erased from my memory. Uh, Casimir. Uh, no, Caspian not Caspian. Kinshire. Caspian Kinshire. Wow. So close. Some of the NPCs uh, that I put into your brain are memorable, are memorable <laughs> but not the ones in this just one. Just because I not haven't looked campaign. at my notes again in a bit. Uh, <laughs> but I think that that was, offic- that was before we officially found out that that's what was going on. And so we were getting hints that, like, they had the impression that this was, like, an ongoing thing. But I think in retrospect, what it was was that that was another instance where, like, Caspian showed up with his adventuring party and like fought that will the wisp thing or whatever and that's what destroyed the lighthouse and that's why they hated adventurers there but they I'm couldn't gonna... quite remember exactly what happened and that's why I'm gonna have to go through my own notes now <laughs> and find out where this how this has repeated itself but for now it, it was definitely there I remember I remember talking about it god damn it <laughs> maybe that was it maybe it was that's why they hated adventurers is cause like other adventurers had come through called like yeah, some other adventurers had come through a long time ago and fought uh, and destroyed the lighthouse. Oh, yeah, trying to fight some... Yeah, the thing. I don't remember there being a Rendell well, or anything like said. that. I don't think it, don't think it was yeah. uh, canon on... But it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't Caspian Kinshire. Oh, I thought it had been. Okay. No. Because that's why they couldn't remember that it hadn't happened. No, it was like, just such a long time ago, old kind of story deal normal forgetting stuff okay yeah okay, okay. normal forgetting stuff that's <laughs> the issue with using memory as a storytelling tool <laughs> yeah as someone who doesn't have a good memory <laughs> Same. <laughs> anyway on the road again here we go We're on the road again uh so where are we where are we planning on stopping today's travels um Stagsted. Are you are you traveling to Stagsteads or are you parking outside, as it were? Are you going all the way there? I would um, say we go there and stay in and in, but keep a low profile, right? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's hard bit. to keep a low profile as our group. Let's be honest. It's true, <laughs> but you know, if we invite people from seven towns over and have like the most fantastic show they've ever seen again, it's a little bit more memorable than like. <laughs> I did see mm. a giant bat come through here. Roll a 29 on my performance check. Yeah. <laughs> it was something for the ages. The people in these here parts have never seen the likes of this show. Okay. Uh, well, you should send out some fake flyers to say, like, oh, I might be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. So you're gonna you're gonna plan to travel all the way to Stagsteads is the idea here. Yeah. 
Yeah, with no interactions along the way. Not at all. Yep, that's Ooh, the plan. Easy uh, so, yeah, mm -hmm. no interactions Ooh. along the way. That's the way that Tom DMs. That's yep. a very consistent <laughs> theme that has happened every time that you've gone on the road anywhere. It's always mm. been easy sailing, no NPCs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Nope. And this are time we, uh, is no exception. Are we walking or are we get, taking like a horse and cart? <laughs> We could take a horse and cart, but let's think about this for a little bit. <laughs> quicker, sure, surely that would make it quicker. Surely. It <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, on the road we are. Um, as you are traveling, it is. It is. It's quiet. It's quiet. It's fine. Oh, oh no! I uh, never mind. You I could... realised I wanted to buy some potions, but there was nowhere to buy potions in that town, Correct. was there? Okay. Correct. Um, but as you are as you are travelling, for the most of the day, it is it is it is plain sailing. You have nice clear skies, though you can barely see them through uh, through the through the trees. Uh, the road is mostly clear, though you uh, bump into a couple of travellers who mostly have their heads down cloaks up and they, they prefer not to interact with anyone on the road which is often mostly a, a safer thing to do um, but one individual or rather two individuals draw your eye an individual and their companion uh, as you're getting a little bit closer to Stagstead it's now uh, late afternoon um, and you've still got a lot of, uh, of, of daylight left uh, as we're moving into the summer seasons um, but you, this, these particular individuals draw your attention because there is there is something very particular about one of the companions. There is one individual here who is uh, wearing kind of tight leathered armor, a long spear on their back, a small circular shield that is uh, attached to it, and you can see that they have a satchel on their side. Um, their arms and their uh, kind of legs from the knee down are bare as they're wearing kind of form-fitting armor that is easy to move in um but beside them is a fully grown brown bear <gasps> Whoa. Wait, it's tortu <laughs> <laughs> wait the person or the bear <laughs> <laughs> who knows <laughs> The fully grown brown bear is uh, is is just walking on all fours, facing down the road. They are they seem to have a, a, there's a satchel on the on the uh, human male's back uh, that looks like it will probably afford a tent, um, but beyond that, it's just a, a brown bear and this dude walking quietly and slowly down the road. Leaning over to Oro, they have a friend like you. <laughs> oh my god! Should we say hi to them, or is that not? You should you not do that whilst you're traveling? I don't know. Do you normally? Is there like a club uh, organization or something for people who can make friends with animals like that? Bear oh. might not be pet friendly. <laughs> don't just approach. You're right. You should be cautious. Yes. Mm. Um, they've got they've got a, a, a nervous <laughs> bandana service bear yeah don't talk to me is a service bear allowed into a shop <laughs> <laughs> would, it, would a service bull be allowed in the china shop <laughs> um if it were trained properly yes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, as time time goes on, the bear and their companion get a little bit closer. Are you planning on interacting with them anyway? Are they like coming opposite us? Yeah. You know that thing that people do when someone's out walking a dog and you just kind of walk by and you're like, I love your dog. <laughs> if they don't do anything, she's probably just going to be like, that's a cute bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone else any plans? Uh, or or might make some like a light weather remark if they say <laughs> nothing like that. Like good weather we're having, eh? And then just carry on. See if they're grabbing anything, or if they're like, I don't want to talk to anybody. 
Well, I mean, they get closer and closer, and you can see that the uh, this 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 bear is mighty to the degree where you might even refer to them as a giant bear. They are colossal in size. Uh, and when they're on all fours, they are probably six foot tall. Um, and <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a big bear. You start to get into a frame of reference now as they're getting a little bit closer, and you can actually see that this bear is huge in comparison to this gentleman he's walking alongside. Uh, and surely enough, they see you coming, and uh, the uh, human kind of leans down, or well, not leans, but like moves their head closer to the bear's mouth, uh, and you can see that the bear's starting to kind of gesticulate a little bit, and the the human kind of uh, nods deeply before they both stop in the road and wait patiently for you to approach them. Uh, I'm scared. Uh, just play it cool. Everything's totally fine. Yeah, stay, stay behind me, Randall. It's fine. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> out behind the shell. <laughs> Get on it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> As you as you approach, uh, the humanoid kind of uh, makes sure to bring his his spear and his shield out, and he leans it. He he holds his spear in his hand, but he's not he's he's leaning it to the side almost as if he's not quite stopping you in your tracks to make sure you don't pass, but in a in a in a in a posture of of quite formal uh, readiness, where he's kind of just like. By the way, I'm here, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is a little That's bit moot, really. Noticed. Yeah, um, but he he stops and he says, uh, "Travelers, my name is Raish, and His Majesty would like to discuss something with you." This is His Majesty Prince Tobias Greyhide. Oh, Your Majesty. <laughs> Oh, the bear. <laughs> no, he's he's just going to the bear, yeah. Was that something hide? R r r r Grey hide. Tobias Grey hide. <laughs> Randall Rand does like a little bow behind Heike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pass. Oh, nobody's nobody's no, 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 no talking, but she's mute. <laughs> How'd that happen? Why is their name Grey hide if they're brown? That is a. Uh, he he kind of shakes his head. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Oh, I'm sorry. That is a point of much contention. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, what, what's the message? It says Prince Tobias is on a quest. Okay. And is looking for. Uh, and he points pretty much directly towards Haiku. For uh, for parlay. With your friend here. Your, your, your Majesty. <laughs> the uh, the bear kind of makes a, 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 as you might imagine, a bearish roar now. It's, where it's just speaking in bear. I can't quite imagine that, Tom. Can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> help me immerse. Immerse me. A little too wookie for my liking, but I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> you do a bear noise. Cheeky shit. <laughs> Who raised you? <laughs> um, Not a bear. Clearly. <laughs> uh, I don't know. And the uh, <laughs> uh, Raish says uh, Prince Tobias is on a quest of great import. They are on their walk of the yesteryear. It is a time where his people uh, walk the walk the world, walk your world, uh, in in pursuit of of noble gifts that they might return to the court with. We're looking for something worthy of returning to our to our town, to our city with and unfortunately we have come up with nothing though we have some items that we might trade with you and you seem to be somewhat of a collector <laughs> how could you tell perhaps we might be able to make some kind of trade something that would be profitable for both of us 
Why do you always put me in these situations? <laughs> you give me a character to work with, I'm going to have to come up with some kind of challenge for you, all right? Where is your um, kingdom? Not of this plane. Whoa, that's like far. <laughs> it is. What have you, uh, what have you found so far? We, uh, we've come up short, unfortunately. Our quest so far has been, uh, unsuccessful. We have this, and he brings from his satchel, uh, here. Uh, and he shows you, uh, a quill. Um, this appears to be a, a magical quill that never runs out of ink. Uh, however, it only writes when it's writing backwards. Ooh. Okay. Uh... Like, does it just write backwards on the page, or do you have to have a mirror to read it? In that, when you write with it, you can only have this uh, the effect of the unlimited ink whilst you are writing backwards. Oh. So it's a left-handed quill. <laughs> it is not. It is it seems to be specifically writing backwards that is the okay. is the crux of this and we also have this and he brings out some quite uh, strong looking kind of silvery almost uh this is kind of a, a steel almost element to this rope um this seems to be able to knot itself but the knots come undone within five minutes okay cool. they're the only things you've got so far, that is all we have found. We need to find... You see, the problem is that the realm that we are from, uh, we are looking specifically for gifts for an Ursine princess that Tobias has an interest in. Uh, and they are fond of whimsy. So... I need to introduce the immovable rod. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. No, no. <laughs> if there is something that you have uh, perhaps as a party, as a, as a group that would be worthy of such a gift that would be uh, we have we could we could trade profitably with you hmm. what hmm. was the name of the walk thing they were on? walk of the yesteryear is that something I've heard of? you can roll uh, your history checks if you like Touch your book, touch your book. <laughs> uh, my book is permanently attached to my back at this point, right? So I'm like... Right. <laughs> yeah. Always touching your book. So this, we can just assume that Randall is always touching yep. your book. Randall's actually cut a small hole in his robe so that he can always feel <laughs> yep. the book on his skin. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Oh, wow. Two rolls today. Oh, Two rolls oh, in the entirety of our game and they have both been critical. <laughs> it's because we're storing we... them up. We're not doing enough rolls to get them. <laughs> yeah. You're right. I haven't roll had to roll as well this. Oddly enough, you do find a story that mentions the walk of the yesteryear in your memory banks. In fact, you read about it yesterday. Um, and it is a tale of, uh, in fact, King Dorian Greyhide on his walk of the yesteryear. Um, in fact, you can deduce from this story that King Dorian is Prince Tobias's dad. Um, and that on his walk of the yesteryear, he was actually involved in, he, he joined an adventuring party uh, traveling through what it seems to be described in, in some detail to you, actually, that uh, the Ursine folk that walk this walk of the yesteryear do so in the Feywild, or they, be they begin in the Feywild, and they leave the Feywild to come to this material plane, uh, or in Faerun in this case, to try and find something that is worthy of the court, uh, of their particular court in the Feywild, and bring it back. And their idea is that the Feywild is so full of whimsy and you know uh, and and such magical power and and uh, creativity that since it is a reflection of the material plane there must be some something there must be things here that are worth their attention um and it's it's a um coming of age kind of 
ritual that people in the royal family do um as they will venture here and they will try and find something worthy of uh, to be a gift to someone else they are courting um and when king dorian greyhide did so he came to the material plane and he joined an adventuring party um and they got involved in, in all sorts of strange pursuits um but it appeared that there was some kind of uh, interaction with the kuatoa some kind of uh, fish folk uh, which was an easy prey for bears um <laughs> bears eat fish um <laughs> So what, what, you, what you kind of get from this is that uh, Prince Tobias has quite a lot to catch up on if he, if he wants to do well. But additionally, what you kind of get from the story is that um, people, who, this, this, these Ursine folk, are actually shapeshifters. They are able to take human form. They just elect not to during their walk of the yesteryear as part of their um, kind of coming to age thing. It's a challenge for them to join to come to the this material plane and whilst still in their only in their bare form uh complete this task cool so you i mean again you got a crit and you've got this you know incredible book at your at your fingertips um and it, it, it's it's almost as if you feel like uh you were given that story you know no, as like a, knowingly as, yeah knowingly yeah Sure coming in handy already that's <laughs> yeah, law <lore>, you know <laughs> it's world building <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna lean into the into the party and sort of go i've uh, i've already got a, a quill which doesn't run dry and it, it writes forwards as well <laughs> oh well you could have a set <laughs> i mean does it sound like they were offering to trade the items they found. It sounded like they were going to try to make you an offer based on what you had. Ask. Ask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> So are you wanting something off the shell? Prince Tobias, his majesty, as I would prefer for you to refer to him, is looking for something that is worthwhile to bring back to the court. We are willing to trade what we have found already or so to augment that trade, we could we could provide you with other material goods. We have we have coin. Okay. Okay. Puddles back up with everyone. <laughs> we puddle. So I, I could do you what what do you want to do? Do you want to get rid of that quill to get Maybe get the other one that's a bit odder, or like what? What's on your mind? I mean, well, I don't really. Well, well, well. well. <laughs> well. Tell us how you feel. They're they're, they're they're a prince, so we might be able to get some you know, some good stuff off of them. And from another plane, so mm. they might have something better to offer that would take a while to get to you. But I think you'd have to come up with something that meets their fancy. I, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I, I don't like trading the stuff I've collected unless the deal is in my favour. Mm. That I'm makes sense. Quite the stubborn turtle. No, oh, not, not you. I'll give you. Oh, I thought, I thought it was I thought it was obvious. <laughs> oh yeah, it was really <laughs> obvious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you have that you think would be fitting for a bit very majesty lady who likes whimsical things? Bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Mm. Nice. Uh... <laughs> Haiku gets his scroll of things out. Oh, <laughs> a scroll of many things. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll of spreadsheet keeping. <laughs> Do you want to like roll a couple of dice and sort of offer a couple of things? That's probably. The... I mean, do you do you think that any? I mean, do you think anything on your shell in your spreadsheet is worthy of a Feywild court? 
Tom, there's like 57 items in this. <laughs> <laughs> don't know all enjoy- Listen, all I want is for my characters to know their characters, right? My players come to this game having an eidetic memory of everything that's in their character sheet. I don't feel like that's too much to ask. <laughs> oh, wait there. There might be something. Where is it? Where is it? This was a suggestion from Adam. Uh, the Opticus Astralis. It's got an ornate spyglass which allows the user to look into the astral plane but never the same place twice. And blinking changes the image. Ooh. That, that feels whimsical. like something. That's, that's cool. whimsical to get. Mm-hmm. If you want to part of it. Oh, I think they have to offer. Okay, alright, alright. I'll have a, a dig around on the shell and sort of stumble around and like it's, it's, I love it's the idea of you trying to get someone, stuff off your back someone get like, it <laughs> can't quite reach <laughs> we're that, all that like thing. trying to get <laughs> yeah <laughs> no one can get it because you keep like twisting your <laughs> yourself and I'm like, <laughs> don't 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 touch that roof don't want to do that not <laughs> oh, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> left a bit oh, right a bit I got it <laughs> Go. <Thank you>. yes <laughs> Right, so I'll, I'll I'll offer that up, uh, and be like, "Oh, this is a this is a spyglass. It lets you uh, look into a different into the astral plane, but it's a bit weird. Sort of. I'll hand it over to give them a go. I don't know if a bear could use it, but I'll certainly hand it over to let them try. You can hear a raw noise from the bear, which again. Sounds Brown. a lot like. <laughs> and uh, as Raish kind of bows, you realize now that the nod that you saw before was actually much more of a bow. Um, as Raish takes an opportunity to try the spyglass. Yeah. Whoa. Blink when using it. Hold it, hold it up and blink. Whoa. <laughs> mm. Wow. Whoa! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> like one of those um from when we were kids, the little things where you put the like round disc in, yeah, and you like mm. click it and it switches to the next picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, races, your highness, this is this this may be considered whimsical enough. It's it. There could be glimpses to anything through this, perhaps. You could hold uh, it to the bear's eye. I I. I uh, I, high, I was highness. testing it. I was testing it for my highness. I was making sure that it was not a dangerous tool that you oh. have handed over. Fair, fair enough. Oh. You know, you gotta let them experience it for themselves. His highness. Yes. His royal highness. <laughs> yes, let, yes, let the royal highness experience that? it for themselves. Yes. yes. His royal highness will, will want to experience it just to see, just in case. Yes, okay. <laughs> Sure, surely enough, you are <laughs> as the bear moves around, and he puts the eyeglass up to him, and he, he says, "You can, you can blink, master." And he blinks a couple of times. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were supposed to call him His Highness, not Master. Or is master I am in his, okay I am in his service. For me, oh. it is okay to use the word master. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to make sure I use the right words. I'm sorry. You'll be safe if you just use His Royal Highness or His Highness or Your Majesty, His Excellence, His Beauteous, <laughs> His Royal Bearness. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just do not offend. No. His Royal Bearness. Absolutely not. You bear him no ill will. He seems pleased. <laughs> but he's interested to see if you have anything else to augment your offer with. Augment my offer? If there was anything else that you prefer to add to this trade, perhaps? Add to it? This is Royal Highness. If 
His Royal Highness is bringing a gift to someone he intends to court, then of course he'll seek the grandest gift he can find. It's not to say exactly. that this isn't good enough. It's just... There might be something greater. Okay, well, one, one, one moment, Your Royal Highness. I'm going to go back to the group. <laughs> all right, we need all eyes on this. Everyone grab a section and look. Okay. <laughs> I, need, I need the link. <laughs> I don't even know if I can share this. <laughs> okay. uh... I might be interested in a bag of rune stones, seven small rune stones, each card with a different symbol on one of the seven colors of the rainbow. That's quite nice. That's cool. What do they do? I'm not overly sure. <laughs> they've, they've, they've not done anything for me yet. If I do someone else. Yeah, maybe. Could I'd I just like to point out that this is definitely a bear king. But Adam, if I was fucking with the players and this was just a normal bear, I would be very upset if you had just given them an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your back, <laughs> eating, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, how much how much confidence do you have in your your backpack full of goodies? Uh, I don't. I don't think they're going to want anything else outside of those runes, rune stones. To be honest, how you, how whimsical uh, is the sprout? <laughs> there's, there's there's this cool little spoon I've got, but it's it's curved and I can't take it off. Oh, oh, well, that won't work at all. Can I see the runestones and see if they have a, a reaction, perhaps, to somebody trying to use them? Yeah, uh, bottom left. Just, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, dig around and, like, move the stuff out of the way and, like, finds the little pouch. The oh. next of a traffic cone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's next to Randall's little, like pouch bit where we stole the Randall. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take the little bag of rune stones, and I'm going to um, do like very like her ritualistic stuff where she pours like the water in the bowl and does the thing and lights the incense or whatever. I'm going to like wash them, uh, and then press digitation them dry, and then have like a clean, like probably something she wove herself put down on the ground and um, just like ask Selene for guidance or something and cast what? guidance on herself and what see... is it what is it exactly that she's interacting with here there's these I got rune lost stones. in the description of, the, oh. of, of all these different things in on Haiku's back he's got a set of rune stones there's seven of uh. them and they correspond with the colors of the rainbow and there's symbols etched in them and he said he doesn't know if they do anything so oh. she's trying to see if okay maybe if his intellectual mind didn't uh -huh. like interact with them maybe this is a bit more of like a divination like like belief type of thing and maybe she sure. can get some 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 selene sure synergy well, going on here with with a with a small amount of your divine magics uh each of these runes seem to uh, just glow a brighter version of the color that they represent Ooh, okay um so yeah, i'll i don't necessarily get like a message from it but i'll absolutely report. You know, yeah the findings that like they seem to interact with divination or divine uh, divine magics a bit well I'll I'll hand the bag over uh, yeah yeah well highness these there's some uh, rune stones here of varying colors uh, I couldn't get them to work but it appears with some magic of some sort you can make them glow even brighter to look nice They're very smooth uh, Race, Race moves to the side and kind of whispers into the ear of the bear and seems to be talking in very low tones so you can't just... shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Bear doesn't do subtle <laughs> uh, Race says uh, His Royal Highness would be happy to trade for the spyglass if you would be willing to take either the rope or the, the quill perhaps either would that be acceptable to you? With respect, Your Royal Highness, no. Would you be willing to accept both of them in trade? No. 
Uh, un unfortunately, your Royal Highness, I, I already have a quill which doesn't run dry, and as, as in in intriguing as the rope which knots itself, mm. if it doesn't stay tied, it, it, it's not particularly useful. I have a lot of rope which stays tied, is all. Meaning no. <laughs> I have a lot of rope <laughs> that stays tied. <laughs> Meaning no disrespect. I, I, I've been doing this all my life. I know the value of things. Especially the things I carry with. Are you suggesting that His Highness does not know the value of things? No, I think it's just that you said yourself that these items weren't very fantastical, and that this item that my friend here has offered up is pretty fantastical. So um, he he likes interesting and and rare things. So you might have to um, <laughs> offer something that piques his interest. We can offer either a monetary exchange or this 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 one particular item that we have been storing that we found useful but not whimsical enough. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, and he brings out a, uh, a branch it appears that the the prince actually does have some like kind of saddlebags almost attached to him, but it's so deep in his fur that you can't see them at first glance. And he brings out a branch, um, and it is is uh, covered in small golden bells along it. Ooh, literally, nearly. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he he kind of ring and the, the bells kind of start to vibrate and call out and they all have a different pitch um and you can see that they kind of can what two of two it like it's a complicated thing apparently <laughs> uh, so there are six there are six bells in total um one of them continues to ring even though the other ones have stopped This bell branch will tell you of the presence of the many different varieties of planar travelers. And one of them in particular will tell you if there are fae nearby. He looks at the bell as it continues to ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who? Which one of us? Do you, uh, do you have a manual for that? Like, do you know which bell corresponds to which? To come with instructions. <laughs> to come with instructions. It's a genuine question, Your Highness. Oh, well, anyone with uh, the, the correct ability to attune to such an item would learn its capabilities. Oh, I'd, I'd have no issue. Not me. That, uh... Is anyone else concerned by the bell continuing to ring? <laughs> he puts his hand on it and it stops. Oh. Well, if it stopped after he's, he's going to force it to stop, that's fine. Uh, it's not going to ring forever. Nope. I was muted. That's okay. I, it didn't matter what I was saying. It worked perfectly with him continuing to talk. So, yeah. Catherine's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not included. <laughs> that seems like a fair trade. You know? This is a very to... generous trade. That yeah, seems well, like a really useful is... thing for us to have. Yeah, I mean, a, 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 a spyglass which lets us randomly see something in the astral plane or something which can detect six different planes of existence, I think. Mm -hmm. The presence of the planes, he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah, do it. <laughs> also, it looks cool. Yeah. Or it was like the little angel and devil on high king's shoulders. Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> well, literally, Oro just like, do it. And then literally the, the other one being like, it seems really useful. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Get the bows. <laughs> also, it's very pretty. I mean, it would become like, like sarcastically regal. Not sarcastically, but... Haiku, the collector, accepts his royal highness's <laughs> offer. <laughs> oh. A slight bow. 
I didn't bow to begin with, but I'll bow now. <laughs> see, okay, yeah. The, the lack of bow was noticed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have a boat with us, so... Ha! <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh, well, with that... You're stone great... telling off for that one. Oh, my God. Listen. The gr- <laughs> Grace grimacing face, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all on the same page here. Yeah. Uh, Raish holds his hand out, waiting for the eyeglass to be given. Yeah, I'll hand it over. He hands you the, the bell branch. Uh, he says, I'm grateful that we could come to some kind of arrangement. I suspect that uh, His Highness will wish to continue travelling to see if we can find anything more valuable, but for now, this is a good backup. Does it have a, a name? The bell branch? It's just branch. for my, just a bell branch. Yes. Okay. Do you or um, His Highness happen to know Thistle? Uh, at, at, at that name, they, they kind of just don't seem to respond. Thistle? Okay. She said she was also from that Fey place, so I don't know how big it is. One day, perhaps you will you will travel to the Feywild and you will notice that it is some would say overpopulated. Oh. It is very busy. It is very unlikely that we would run in the same circles. That's fair. He's a, he's a prince. Right. I just she seemed very powerful and magical so I thought maybe she was no, it was just a question. That's fine. What is, uh, oh, wait, I should probably ask. Should, should, should we see if he wants to kill the dragon with us? That's a pretty good idea. Imagine bringing back a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> or something from the horde. Yeah. I mean, you can ask, sure. I mean... yeah. uh, Your Royal Highness, we are, we are currently <laughs> questing to kill a dragon, a most honorable quest, uh, which I'm sure there will be loot. A, about a plenty, loot a plenty. Oh, yeah, loot a plenty, and of mm-hmm. course, something from the dragon itself, perhaps. What kind of dragon is it that you seek? Did they tell us what kind of dragon? <laughs> MC's here. Hi, organized. MC. That's very kind Aww. of you. Oh, paying forward the gift you got from Zasleen. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you, MC. Thank you. It's being organized by the Purple Dragon Knights, if you're familiar with them. But no. I don't know if it said what kind of dragon. Digging through, looking for the pamphlet, leaflet thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, trying to find it. <laughs> you, 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 you find the pamphlet, the, the the kind of the quest board thing that you'd found previously. It does not mention a, a, the type of the dragon that you were hunting. Um, but it, but Raish says to you, uh, we are. Um, though the the promise of the treasure of a horde of a dragon is a significant boon and that would surely be a triumphant return to the court uh, without knowing what kind of dragon that you are hunting we're not sure whether or not our interests align that's fair okay that's fair enough we're going to meet the purple dragon knights in Weymouth if you don't find anything else interesting in the next few days perhaps you could meet us there and find out and decide whether you'd like to continue yourself perhaps if we hear more about this the kind of this dragon that you are hunting i hope that you will be sensible and whether or not you dispatch it not all dragons are worthy of being hunted i think this one's been causing trouble so Hunting well, chasing away. trouble is relative. Or subjective. True. Wise, wise words. Fair. Have you all gone the Gragon D's nuts joke to any of the NPCs? <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 Dragon these nuts. I, I knew that that's what I knew that's what you meant. 
But also, I just said, uh, I, I, I was much funnier to me reading it as Gragon. <laughs> Gragon DC. <laughs> <I am safe. laughs> well, uh, it was a pleasure to have done business with you. You have the gratitude of the Ursine uh, Court, uh, at least for now. And as I said before, maybe one day you make it to the Feywild and you realize how difficult it is to find any whimsy here in comparison. If we ever do come there, could we come visit? <laughs> she looks pleadingly directly at the His Royal Highness, not at Reish. Reish. Okay, you, you hear a, <laughs> the bear just looks directly at you, deadpan. Mm -hmm. uh, for a for a for, a, for an uncomfortable amount of time, before you see their features kind of soften slightly, uh, and you hear a <laughs> and the bear <laughs> to, to Ray and Ray says, uh, "You would be granted an audience if you decided to visit the Ursine Court." Huh. Thank you very this much. Is, uh, a great boon that His Royal Highness has given unto you. Yeah, you should it not seems take lightly. So. No, of course. His Royal Highness, Migu Bear. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we look forward to meeting you again, then, Your Royal Highness. And I wish oh, you much wow. luck on your quest. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, uh, he echoes your sentiment. Good day to you, travelers. Good day. Safe Bad. travels. Okay. I, lo I love the idea that even though this is clearly like a sentient humanoid who also happens to be able to take the shape of a bear, Nurley's just like innocent persistence, like an ability to like scritch animals behind their ears, like mm. even metaphorically, just made him kind of be like, fine, <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. It was your, it's your, it's your character background. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. There you that. Yeah. Thank you. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> that was the clasped hands were were attempting mm -hmm. to. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. That. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, there have been tons of bears. I've been putting bears all over the shop for you, Tortu. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing all the heavy bear lifting over here. Right. Notice me, Tortu. Notice me. I'm bringing bears over. Uh, anyway, that means uh, that they're a kind bear. <laughs> so you are. <laughs> Given this bell branch, um, and you, I mean, you're said so you're going all the way to Stagstead's tonight, right? This is just mm -hmm. okay. Um, I'd just like so to point we... out, I, I I stick it on the shell in the position such as it's always slightly ringing. Oh, oh I love it. <laughs> That's not going to get annoying at all. Yeah, it's going to real annoying for everyone at bar, apart from you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oops, I accidentally. Flip your coin of silence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, not only like you flip the coin of silence, and Haiku continues to try speaking to you guys, you just don't reply because you can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> they would know because they hear the bells stop ringing. I guess they would notice that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you end your journey today. Uh, after taking a turning south towards Stagstead's, um, by being stopped in the road. From the bushes, you see a small, uh, it looks like an outpost, maybe, uh, a small wooden building that seems to hold maybe, you'd suspect, three or four guards that step out onto the road. Uh, they look well armed, well armored. They're Armor is a lot cleaner than you'd expect, you'd expect, and they are wearing the garb of the Purple Dragon Knights. They stand in the road, shields. The sword, the, their swords are uh, kind of uh, sheathed, but not hooped in the same way that you'd expect for joy, for, for people people with weapons in Cormir. Um, and they say, "Halt, travelers." You've come too far. What is your business? And we'll end today's session now. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. Goddamn.
Well-armed, well-armored, and well-arm-muscled. All sorts of well-arms. So many arms. <laughs> They've got wells for arms. Uh, and that is our game today, everybody. Uh, we got through tons of stuff. I'm glad you guys got a chance to meet the bear prince, Tobias Greyhide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very glad that you got to experience the troll coming back inside and faffing about with his with all of his limbs and his shit. <laughs> uh, we also had Oro's performance, and we had Randall reading the magic phrase for the book. All good stuff. <laughs> progress, chums. Progress. Um, right. Okay. Uh, I'll say it was good to be myself again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very glad to see that Nerdy is back to true form, and we've got Haiku, not grumpy as well. We've all, we got our we got our team back. Oh, She's yeah. back in, yeah. in full full shape, which is good because if you're coming up on this dragon, you're going to need to be <laughs> have your wits about you. Have your wits <laughs> about you. Uh, right. I suspect our next miniature quest will get you a level Ooh. so if you want to start poking around some books to make sure that you know what's coming for you uh <laughs> that will save you some work in the future Ooh. um what's coming to you what's coming to you today we rolled was it two dice or we did two two yes. skill checks and both <laughs> yes. of them were crits oh, good. the first uh, rolls of those advantages were crits yeah <laughs> <laughs> both at advantage and both of crits uh, what a game so looking at our calendars next Sunday Jenny and I aren't here the Sunday after that is Boxing Day so I don't know how people feel about doing stuff on Boxing Day unlikely that we'll have everybody here but mm -hmm. something to discuss I suppose I thought that uh, was a Canadian holiday I didn't know y'all did that too yeah we do Boxing yeah. Day I mean yeah, it's not really a holiday fight. Yeah, it's, it's, most, well, it's a bank holiday. Oh, it's a bank yeah. holiday, and it's usually people eating leftovers from the meal before. And mm -hmm. yeah, we get a few extra days off actually because it's on a Sunday. Oh, ooh, cool. It's the same number of days off. They just shift them so that you don't waste. We the also bank do holiday Boxing Day. A... We don't yeah. box. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm fine with the 26. Cool. We'll, uh, we'll have a chat us, just in so. case that's. Just in case that's a thing for people. I think we do. We have plans on. We do, but I don't know. I don't know how long we'll be there for. So I don't know. Okay. So we'll have to. Bit... We'll, I'll have to ask my yeah. mom about it. All right. We'll 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 chat it. We'll chat about it. But regardless, in the new year, when we definitely do have new games, all sorts of crazy lore droppings gonna happen. Woo wee! <laughs> I'm excited Ooh. because. After all of the time running this campaign, I've had all these little threads of what's going to happen and all these different cool story bits that you guys have been like just briefly brushing past. Mm -hmm. And it's all going to come together. <laughs> and I've got this one reveal moment that I've got in my brain, and you guys are going to be like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited. We're going to have to make a highlight video of when, I, when we, I do reveal it to you. So you can go back to me saying, you guys are going to be like, <gasps> And then there's going to be a U.S. going. <gasps> <laughs> I plan. think I think the new year will mark the one year since I was I joined the campaign too. Oh, oh my god! Yeah. Shit. It feels like yesterday. Oh, what a Christmas miracle! <laughs> uh, everyone must burn a box, otherwise each house's unburned box opens a portal to an eldritch horror. That sounds Thank like. A wonderful Call of Cthulhu prompt for Jack, who's still vaguely working on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Lol>. okay. <laughs> uh, we eat ourselves to death in the 25th in the morning of the 26th before sunrise around 4am. We go and climb a mountain and watch the sun go up. Because asked, you could tell me just about fucking anything and I would believe you absolutely with no shadow of a doubt. Climb a mountain? <laughs> But climbing a mountain makes me feel... This is the first time I've ever doubted something you've said. <laughs> there are lots of places in Canada that don't have mountains. Uh, oh, that's Africa, South yeah. African, actually. Yeah, we're talking about Africa, yeah. Oh, I thought... That's that... from Africa. We oh, do that? Well, you actually do that? Wow. Mm. All right, well, I believe you. 
<laughs> when I said it was a Canadian thing and then they answered immediately, I was like, oh, oh. they must be Canadian. How's oh. that? <laughs> Sometimes Canada is not mountains. Oh, oh. Uh-huh. I'll find the pictures. Please, oh, find the pictures. I'd be very happy to see this. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I know that you're okay. not Canadian. Not that it's not good to be Canadian, just to know that so that I don't say something like that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, GG's, everybody. Mm. GG's. GG. GG's. GG's. See you, you next year. Game? Yeah, probs. Probs, mm. probs right. next year. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe uh, we're just up to Christmas, but, uh, but you never know. Uh, maybe next most year. likely next year. Most likely next year. <laughs> 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 some, some length of time. Yes, yes. But, maybe, but also, Jenny will we'll be streaming between again. now and then. Oh yeah, I'll be streaming. Yeah, but not not D and D stuff. Yeah. I finally Unless got to experience walls. snow in Animal Crossing. Speaking <gasps> of, because I didn't play it all last winter apparently, and so I made Aww. my first snow boy yesterday, and it was very nice. Oh, Aww, yeah. cute! It was very fun. Was it was it a perfect snow boy though? <laughs> no, because I couldn't I figure out how to do it at first, and. If one ball rolled too far, I think too far. I think the bottom was too big because he said the like normally you only get something if it's perfect. But this is my birthday, and I was like, okay, so I fucked up, but I don't know how. Good, good, good. good. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, anyway, uh, it's been a pleasure to play with you all again. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are we raiding? Are we doing something? Where are we going? Uh, We'll just end. We'll just end. I think. Okay. All right. GG's okay. everyone. GG's everybody. Thanks for GG's. hanging with us. Games. Bye. <laughs> see you when we see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.